You're listening to Hotep Ish with your host, Dewan B. Intelligent Ish Talk, Intelligent Shit Talk, where we balance the profound with the profane. Political satire, celebrity and expert guests, information and entertainment, conversation and solutions. Leave your feelings at the door. like two more seconds, two more minutes, start to get a few things put together, 2021 year in review with Dr. Short, I already have Dr. Short here on the line, and we'll be ready to go in about, like, give me like a minute, two minutes max, and we'll be ready to go. y'all what up y'all welcome 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 to that intelligent ish talk that intelligent shit talk we are live we are live with dr short he got some um he has a new book coming out but there's been some things going on that he's trying to we're trying trying to show y'all dr short had posted the cover the title of his new book but 
Facebook banned him for 30 days. I don't know how long, for I don't know how many days. But they banned him for putting the cover of his own new book out. It's been all kind of crap like that going on this past year and longer than that. So we are about to review the year. Talk about some things that's been going on. Some predictions that we made. See if they came true or not. And then we're going to get into Dr. Short's new book. Because Dr. Short got some great, great, great information for us. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and go, uh, tune in. Share the video. Like the video. Pass this around to everybody you know that likes information. And for those who keep their head in the ground, leave them alone. They can, they can screw off. What's up, Dr. Short? Hey, man, I just emailed it to you, so you should have it. And it wasn't 30 days, but I got blocked on two accounts for three days apiece for putting this book cover up. There's no cuss words. There's no nudity. Just not, nothing. Uh, yeah, so, okay, I, I got it. I got, I got, I got. I'm about to put it up right now for so everybody can see. Yeah, just so people. This isn't the first time I've been shut down for putting a book cover up. A trade publication gets is violating community standards. So you know, I don't have a million followers, but they're really working to keep me from having ten. I yeah. must really be saying something some of the time because. Uh, and I'm not whining. I'm not whining, but it's just, they sure work hard. I'm thinking they're people with huge following. Okay, so. Putting up a book? Dr. Short, I got the book cover on screen right now, and it's, you, you show us the email where they say you violated Facebook. People, people, y'all see this cover right here. Y'all, look at this. The Spart uh, <laughs> Spart Spartacus, the real Cory Booker story. But this picture, this image is going. <laughs> His image of Cory Book is hilarious. And you you wrote this with the infamous Roger Stone. Yeah, that's correct. So I, I, let's I, jump I, right into I, it. Let's because yeah. you know let's let's jump right into your book. Tell us a little bit about okay. it, the motivation behind it, and the what can we expect from it and when can we expect to buy it. Go to work. The motivation the motivation behind it from my end. I've been talking to Roger Stone. We've been talking about Cory Booker for about three, four, four years uh, about Cory and Cory's issues and how Cory is corrupt. What you will find if you pick up this book, No Punches or Pull, we just show that Cory Booker is a bushy, entitled coon who makes it out that he's a man of the people and in reality he's for people with big bucks. He's delivered nothing to black folks. And he makes it out that he's some hero. He's a man of the people, that he's brought crime down in Newark, he, that he brought a renaissance and he reversed Newark. And it's simply not true. Okay. And that he's in the pockets of big pharma. He's in the pockets of high tech. He's in the pockets of anybody. He's in the pockets of Zionists who don't necessarily like black folks. Uh. He's not for the people. Crime didn't really drop. He cut the police department and murder and stuff went up. But just when things began to hit the pan, fan, he moves on and gets a promotion. So who's behind him? Who is he really? And and he talks out of both sides of his mouth. I mean, he'll boast about being a man that takes liberties with women. But now he's an advocate for women, right? Yes. I mean, that's uh, everything that you see. And so he's the blackest, but uh, is he really the blackest? And you don't really get to know much about him. But if you really probe, you'll find that he had a charitable organization that you would have thought was helping people. And it was really about helping himself and his friends. Mm. Now he took down Sharp James. Sharp James may have been crooked, tried to hook up a girlfriend. At least I'm gonna just say it. <laughs> oh God, I'm a talking hypocrite. It was pussy. It was <laughs> case. That's why he did it. I'm not saying it's right, but look, I could just say to you, I have a, a good friend. I love this woman. I could do some wrong stuff for her. <laughs> just saying. I thank God I'm not in politics. They asked me to get to because I'd probably get in trouble. I'm buy I'm buy her that damn coat. See the coat they got their seal skin coat if I give them a fur. Right. I mean just <laughs> it was pussy. <laughs> 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 and it's kinda 
kind of it happens. It happens. Look, and 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 I'm a clean living person, but if you like women, women can get to you. You'll do something. You will do something for a woman you like. It's 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 how we put together this been. So Sharp James hooked up a woman he liked. And the scheme of things that's and he went he got punished. But Cory Booker is more crooked than the man he took down. And the man he took down at least looked out on some level for black people. Cory Booker helped gentrify, kick black people around. He hooked up I don't know what happened with the watershed, but if you recall, maybe about mm, two years ago, Newark had a major problem with lead poisoning on the level of a, a Flint. Cory Booker was supposed to have solved that, but no one said anything about Cory. They were all down on Mayor Raz to Baraka, who handled it. The schools didn't get any better. In fact, when Cory Booker was mayor, some Hispanics murdered a whole bunch of black gay kids. Remember that? And they, they barely, they just, you know, can you imagine a black, some black men killing some white gay kids or some Latino gay kids or some Asian gay kids? You know that they would have thrown every book in the Library of Congress at them. But when these black gay kids got massacred, you haven't even heard the story. You're on the West Coast. I mean, and Cory Booker's a big friend of the gay community, and he's out for them. Well, these are gay people. Shouldn't their lives been, shouldn't have been some big things? Shouldn't have the press that come out. They should have done everything for these black gay kids that got killed. They should have gotten a few million dollars per family. That didn't happen. In fact, they didn't find everybody. And those wow. were illegal. From, yeah, you didn't even hear about it. Wow. And by the way, here we go. Here we here we go, brother. Um, brother Dewan, is Doctor Short saying it's good that they kill black gay people? Is Doctor nope. Short mad that they kill black gay people? That happened well over eleven years ago. I'm still angry. They didn't deserve to be slaughtered. Don't have to agree with the the, the confusion that these young kids had, but you can't murder our children. Well, did Cory Booker go public or make a? Nope, not a whimper from that Negro. To me, if, if you are a hero, and he calls himself Spartacus, the leader of, of freeing slaves fighting the empire, that would have been a point to say nobody can hurt children, no matter what those children's issue is. Okay? Yeah. See, the one they put us out there, we black men who are nationalistic, we love all black people. We don't agree with all of them. We don't want anybody hurting none of us. Okay. How did Cory Booker let that happen? It should have been a death penalty for every person that killed those black babies. That's true. Okay, that's that you hear in my heart. You hadn't heard about it. I've been there. I'm still angry. There's a lot of stuff I've seen, stuff I wish was right, stuff I wish people would be punished for, be handled for if they did to our community. Okay, when I heard about the gay black man in the desert in Nevada, uh, I'm not happy about that. I'm, I'm mad he's doing tricks with white boys with no chaps in their pants. But I don't want them because, one, if they can kill one, they can kill us all. Wow. See, it's a... Uh, now, I'm glad you said that because it's about... It's about... That's what being on code is. Being on code is recognizing a threat that may not be coming directly to you as a person, but it's coming to you by proxy and mm -hmm. jumping on it and addressing it in the moment. That's what being on code is for a lot of people who are unclear what being on code is because people who don't understand being on code, they're gonna the first thing they're gonna say is, Why is Dr. Short attacking another black man? You know how those people think, Dr. Short. So, yeah, well, go ahead. It's Talk about crazy. that. The point is, is that um, is a drug dealer only bad if he's white in the hood? Or can he be bad when he's black? See, this is what gets me. You can have a black abortionist kill a million babies a year. And everybody say, oh, he's a doctor. 
and yet a white cop can beat up or shoot one black person in another state, and we're all up in arms about it. And I'm thinking, of course I'm against a white cop shooting the black person. But what about the person killing these babies? I mean, the scheme of things, who's going to kill more? This nigga named Gosnell, who's up in Philly, that killed at least 17,000 live babies, primarily black. He's not seen as that bad a person. But this guy, Chauvin, who's put his knee on two black people, we, we hate him. And I'm not saying we shouldn't. But we don't feel nothing about Gosnell, who used to boast about cutting the spine of live black babies. And that, that doesn't, it's that, you know, pardon me, we're fucking sick if they don't see my point of view. That I don't like evil, period. I don't like evil if we do it to ourselves, if someone else does it. Our people, a lot of black folk have, uh, they're immoral and amoral. We're only concerned when evil is done to us by other people. What we do to self, that doesn't matter. That's like a person that drinks uh, cyanide every day to see if it'll kill him. Who's worried about, you know, getting hit by a hit and run driver. And I'm thinking, well, damn, <laughs> you're not as likely to get hit by hit and run driver as you'll die from taking poison. See, I believe in dealing with what we can deal with. And then those harder things you build up to do it. It's the same way, and that's just military strategy. They didn't go after Japan right away. Didn't that die Nimitz and MacArthur? They did island hopping. They took one island moving towards Japan, so they took down what they really need to take down. And if an island was too strong, they thought they'd take too many casualties, they would go around it and take a weaker point and keep moving and starve those people or isolate an area that was too strong for them to take on. Um, black people lack a martial strategic mindset, in particular, most black men who are taught go along to get along. That includes begging for push instead of standing up and running your home. Think, well, if I beg, I mean, women don't like beggars, so they'll help a beggar if no one really respects one. If we're at war, then there has to be a strategy. If you, and, you know, if you don't plan, you plan to fail. That's even more so if you're in a conflict. So if you don't have a plan and you're going through conflict, you will lose. Why are we losing every day? Because there's no plan to win. No plan how to take on somebody. Uh, no plan for how we deal with stuff. And uh, again, I'll go to the white man's playbook. And I love the white man's playbook. Before you even had an American Revolution, the Sons of Liberty... And the other people went after all the folks that didn't want uh, the colonies to break off from England. This country had maybe 2.5, maybe 2.6 million people in 1776. And you know what happened? What happened? They ran... Anywhere from 100 to 200,000 people who didn't want to join the revolution got ran out of the United States. What became the United States? They made people get out. If you don't want to, and this is white on white, you don't want to be, you don't want your own white country. I mean, I'll point this gun at you. That's white people dealing with white folks. We say George's ass has to go. If you still with George, then your ass has to go too. You know, the, the, white, white, white people, people can, can get, get down, down absolutes. Niggas want to treat everything like it's gumbo. The great thing about what you said is like, because uh, we, we talk, for those listeners, Dr. Randy Short of the Line, we talk, and he has a new book that's getting ready to come out, Spartacus, The Real Cory Booker Story. Get ready to get that. Uh, when we have a link for it for you to buy, we will come back on here and let you know. But It's, it's on, on Amazon. Amazon. It's harvestmedia.net. Oh, it's on Amazon already. Okay. Both, Both of my, my books, books are on Amazon and as well, and you can also harvestmedia.net. And um, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry for interrupting you. No, no, I'm glad you did that because I, I, I didn't know. I would have already ordered it if I knew it's already on there. I'm over yeah, here going yeah, to my computer yeah. right now. Um, I'm about to yeah. order it right now while we're talking and show y'all my receipt. Um, but 
And if they bought the other book, put up some comments. I only have like eight comments. I know the first one's selling slowly. You know, somebody sabotaged the distribution. It took my publisher like seven months to find out what was going on where people were ordering books and they couldn't get it. Mm. And so uh, even when you called me, I was on the phone with my publisher. You know, it's people sent me a direct deposit and it's taken like two weeks. So they mess with us. I, I Look, I'm not going to stop doing what I'm doing. Just know that they mess with us. You know, folks hacked my cash app and folks are saying I stole my own money. I, I had to file a police report and I'm going to get their asses. I mean, because they, they, they took they took full figures. That shit hurt. But anyway, uh, it'll work itself out. It, it'll, it'll definitely work itself out. Like going back to what I was getting ready to say a little earlier. Um, you talked about, you know, them being on code with each other and kicking out the people who didn't want to be a part of the rev revolution. That's right. The same thing That's can right. be said and for people, like, for people who don't understand why the Kyle Rittenhouse thing is, is something that people like black people like me pay attention to. The reason why I pay attention to, to, to a Kyle Rittenhouse is because I, I don't see it. Of course, he didn't kill any black people. What I saw was a white man killing other white people that he deemed weren't on code. So it yeah, yeah, but but if you look at it, the new video that came out, Kyle ran from them. No, I, I get that. No, I, I, I saw I saw I saw that part from day one. Like I, I broke the whole part down. I know about the part where he broke down. Like the people who listen regularly, they're up on that part. We understood about him running from those people and whatever, and still shooting them. But with him going out there with same same difference with uh. There was a man, a machete man in North Car that, that drove from North Carolina a couple years ago and killed an uh, older black man with a machete in New York. What he said was he was going out to kill young black people, but he was scared. Kyle Rittenhouse is somebody who was talking all that shit before he went even up there about killing black people. That's what he wanted. But since he couldn't get close enough, so he couldn't do that, he went ahead and he saw some white folks that were off cold in his mind. They attacked him in his mind. And he went and shot and killed him. And the reason why and, the rest and, of and America they, and they were and they and the, were hold on. And the reason why and what were, the reason why the rest of America is celebrating Kyle Rittenhouse the way they're celebrating Kyle Rittenhouse is because they see him as the one having the courage in their minds to get white people who are not on who are not on coal on coal with his gun. And that's what and that's what I sell say we're looking at when we're dealing with the Kyle Rittenhouse situation. Yes, it's a white on white thing, but it's centered around white people being on code with one another. Go ahead, Dr. Short. Now, you know, the thing that makes Kyle so hot is that Kyle didn't shoot one. Kyle shot and killed two Jewish men. And for him not to go to jail in America the way that Jewish lives matter, and they do. Um, and I must say it, I believe everybody's life matters and black lives matters. But he shot two Jewish people and, and, and he, he beat it. Oh, Jesus. You yeah. have to understand the media is shook because of who's in the media. And I didn't see everybody in the media is one thing. But look, read any publication that's run by Jewish Americans. They'll let you know they have a very good representation in media. I think that's fair. Yes, they do. Now, when when you can kill two Jewish people, and you're known as, and you're not under the jail, that's a major victory for a certain group of 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 whites who are not pro Jewish. There are people who absolutely think Jewish people are in control of everything, and Jewish people are the enemy. They really do exist. Adam Wasson, these groups, they are real, they're real groups of white people who feel like Jewish people have gone too far. So when Kyle shot two Jewish people, maybe three, and he's not in jail, this 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 hasn't even happened. This I mean, this hasn't happened in your my lifetime, Dewan. And 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 and, and That's that a good point. Not, not not in not even go to jail for a day, nothing. Mm, my lord. So, so that's for uh, those of you uh, listening, I may have some audio issues going on over here. So, be like on my end, not down the short, there's some other stuff going on. I'm on my computer mic, so my shit sounds trashy. So, make sure y'all go ahead and ignore that. But I want to show y'all something real quick. 
Yes, I just purchased Dr. Short's book. It's coming Tuesday, January 18th. Um, so, yeah, I want you guys to do the same. It's on Amazon. He has the hardcover. I'm getting it. And then whenever I do see I'm Dr. Short, I'm going to make sure I have him sign it for me. But I need you guys to go ahead right now to Amazon.com. Spartacus, you see it on the screen. Go to Amazon right now. Buy it. And when it's available, it will come and be shipped directly to you from Amazon. Do that right now. Please, please, please buy his book. Go ahead, Dr. Short. And 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 it and the book, it just goes on and on about the fraud, uh, Corey hooking people up, not doing stuff for people, him faking being a hero. I mean, it's just, it's, it's bottomless. Who is this person? And they want him to be president one day. We, we've already had one Obama. Now they go give us another one, a bald-headed one that don't even have a black woman with them this time. Um, <laughs> and there's some things that didn't go in the book. Um, Roger was like, Randy, I don't want you to put anything in there too sleazy. Uh, don't please, you know, so don't talk about Jesse Smollett and Cory Booker. Just don't. So there's some things, you know, certain things are not. We're going to do another book because... I'm waiting for this trial. Once they sentence uh, Jesse Smullett, because I was saying, Roger, you know that this dude is all up in this. And that's something else. Isn't that something how Kamala and, and, and Cory Booker, and there was this big, big, big homo schwomo conspiracy with this guy, Bussy, uh, or, or Jesse Smullett, or whatever you want to call him. He, he's connected. And that's something that's not in the book. They just so oh, well, we can't prove it. Don't do that. We did that. So I had to like ride a break and not talk about certain things or Cory Booker being accused of literally trying to rape a man in the men's restroom. Oh, yes, there's a case just like <clears throat> Don Lemon. Yeah, I mean, first and foremost, I don't think I could get an erection in a place where I could smell doo-doo and pee or hearing a uh, toilet slush. That's really... Is that romantic to you? I mean, I mean, I mean okay, not to me. I mean, God, this in the bathroom. Corey Buck I mean, broken. Just, Go ahead, Corey well, Buck breaker. You know, it, well, yes. Every every time he runs for office, it's a new woman that he's gonna marry. Now, I'm gonna just say this to you: If I were really, really paid the way I would like to be paid one day. I, I'm going to go to either Uganda or Kenya and get me, I'm not Kenya, Uganda or to Brazil. And at least I, I'll be engaged because I, I can, you know, I'm like completely, I know I, I can handle my affairs financially. You know, this, this COVID has messed people's money up, folk getting divorced, folk killing families and such. But Corey, Corey's paid. Now, man, if you had a jock, a football player, a politician. I mean, there's no woman that even wants to be a beard to you after all this time. That just doesn't sound right to me. Are you hearing me? I mean, you're pulling in six, seven figures a year. You can start a family. There are people out here who are trying to save up and, and they've made it really hard on black men forming families. They've fucked up employment and opportunities for black men to prevent us from procreating and being good dads. But when I see a Negro with a lot of money, a good amount of money, and you're of a viable age and you're not like, not even like engaged. You're not, you're not even trying to, to get down with the pussy. Um, I have a problem. I really do. I'm not saying that they can't be gay, but my thing is if you're representing yourself as a man that likes women, when you've got money and power, women will come to you. You don't have to look. So I'm thinking you're in the center of attention, you're in documentaries, you're on television. No woman that says, I'm going to have your baby, even if I steal your condom out of the trash bag and put it myself and show up and force your ass to marry me. That has to happen. Can it happen? Are you hearing me, brother? I'm not making an improbable statement here. I'm saying that when you're a man with wealth, power, influence, that turns women on. 
That's very true. And I, it's I'm funny, about it's, women it's, will, speaking of that. Women will, mail, women will freeze dry their drawers and mail it to you. So that you know you can come up in there. That Now, somebody has had to say, and he's light-skinned with green eyes. You know how black women, a lot of black women want to have a white dude without the... Uh, without the shame, so they get a light-skinned <laughs> dude. I mean, so he's almost got blue eyes. He's light-skinned, too, and his lips aren't that big. He don't have super good... I mean, he almost looks like, you know, a little effeminate uh, mulatto George Washington. <laughs> They're sisters that don't want someone to have kids too dark. And then you get with Corey, your kid's probably going to come out the color of, like, vanilla jello, um, vanilla jello pudding, right? He's not going to come out too dark. Okay, so for all the people that hate dark skin and you want kids, maybe have freaky color eyes and shit, that you could get with someone like Cory Booker. You don't even want him. You just like his gene pool isn't too dark and that, that he's got some kind of white great-grandfather or something. And maybe your kids will come up with hair that you don't have to buy Afro Sheen for. I get it. There's somebody that says, oh, he's so fine. In other words, he's so light. That's, and he's got money, too. I don't even care if he's bi, as long as I have, like, coats and shit, and I get to shop at Tiffany's and Macy's. He could be as queer as he wanted to be. Have one kid, leave me alone, let me fly on jets and shit. There, look, I grew up around Howard, and I've seen a whole bunch of bourgeois, blue lace sisters that know their husbands are shaky, but they live in a nice house. They've got the most China and shit from France, and... They don't want to have a one kid anyway because their asses are bisexual too. They all were screwing in their sororities, right? They find a, a person that's about as twisted as them and they form a family. You've seen this too. I know. Yes, you yes, yes. The whole, the whole beard yes, situation. You got him up in, when they have money, that's hill. easy to make happen. Yes, I, I'm just telling you. I've seen this. I've seen it. And, and the, the husband's looking at all, <laughs> winking at all the guys. The wife is like ignoring him. Uh, and she's looking at the women too. Ooh, you have nice hands. <laughs> so, to to me, if he really wanted a beard, or if he really wanted to be in love for real, he he's in his prime. What's he waiting for? And he has some money. I'm not saying anything about him other than why every time you run for office, it's a new woman. And this last woman, I forget her name, but she says she's, uh, she implies she's omnisexual. So you get with the woman who says that, you know, she's non-binary. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I didn't, I didn't say that. I didn't say that this, this woman's saying that. So I'm looking at that saying, all right, brother, whatever. And there's a little video. You don't have to believe me. You could pull it up. And he has a little Jewish guy riding his back. It looked like Frankie went to Hollywood. I mean, that very awful group from the 80s. Uh, there's a song called Relax, and they have people barebacking, uh, playing out this LGBT stuff. Oh. So Cory Booker has a man riding his back. Now, would you have a man riding your back, even though he's a short dude at a party? Uh, hell no. Okay, I'm just saying the videos out there. I didn't make the video. I hold on, know. you said he has a video. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. He got a you video with video? with somebody riding his back. Yes, he has a video with a man, a white man riding his back. Oh, white? Oh, hell no. Yeah, you know, I'm just saying. No, I'm not making anything out of it. I'm just saying the man's riding his back. He's very short now. He's very short. I person. don't He's give a damn if he a midget, mm -hmm. baby. Okay, West, well, I'm here if it's Western. No. Okay, well, that's what you have. <laughs> oh, you want me to send it to you? <laughs> yeah, I'll, 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 yeah, I, yeah. I'll, hold on. While I'm talking to you, and put my hope my phone doesn't act, I'm going to put you on speaker, and I'm going to look for this. Uh, I can go ahead. No, go ahead and look for I'm going to get the people to recap while you're doing that. All right, y'all okay. listening. Y'all listening. To the intelligent ish talk, intelligent shit to talk, hotep ish. We have Dr. Randy Short live, live, live in studio today, or on the phone. And we're doing a year, and we're talking the 2021 year in review. A lot of things have been going on this year, a lot of things have been happening right now. We're talking about uh, Dr. Short's new book uh, about called Spartacus, talking about Cory Booker. Um, go ahead and buy that, download that right now on Amazon. 
And uh, right now he's looking for a video. It's some video of Cory Booker with another grown-ass man riding on his back. I want to see this. What the fuck, Cory Booker? We got, um... Yeah, so we got, uh... We, we got a lot going on. Thank y'all for joining the chat room. What's up, Butter Love? What's up, Derek Henry? I, I didn't say what's up to y'all yet because we just kind of jumped right into it. So thank everybody in the chat room for joining the chat. Um, another thing I want to know, go to hotepbitch.com slash shop. I got... The t-shirts on deck. We got the t-shirts on deck. Um, free shipping for all orders over fifty dollars. And you know, you know, when it comes, you know, when it comes to the scholarship, look, you people wear basketball and football uniforms all the time with other people's names on it that don't do nothing for us as a people. I say, you know what we gonna do? We gonna put. Our great scholars, our great warriors on the front of our chest. Got my scholars t-shirt. Do, uh, Dr. John Henry Clark, black people don't owe anybody anything but an ass whooping. We got the Rebels for the Cause t-shirt. We got all that. We even got kid sizes now. Kid sizes and, um, and hoodies. And also uh, uh, sweatshirts. So whether you want a t-shirt, hoodie, kid size, we got all the good stuff. You dig what I'm saying? Dr. Short, you back with the, uh, you, I ain't even find it yet. Hold on, I'm here. I, okay. Look, you know, they have a way of scrubbing these things. They do be scrubbing. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I'm going to put Cory Booker dancing. Because uh, when I put this up here, um... <laughs> I've sent this around. Let me see. Dancing. Is it recent? Oh, no, it's old. It's old. I'm just saying I wouldn't have anyone on my back at any age. <laughs> <I'm so> sorry. <laughs> uh, let me see. Let me see. And I may have to get the name of the guy. I may have to stop and get the name of the man. It says his name. And by the way, you know the folks that run this social media. You got this thing that I put in Cory Book and they told me it was inappropriate. Oh, here, I found it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on one second. Hold on, mute, mute. I found it. Give me one second. You did. I found it. Here it is. Hey, look, people. I just found it. Here we go. What the fuck? I don't, I don't buy on this. I don't want to buy on this. Well, hold on, people. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. This is Cory Booker having a model talk good time with a whole bunch of white dudes. And he's dancing with another man on his back. My predecessor. Oh, what the fuck did I just see, people? What the fuck did I just see? People still don't think we won. Well, I, I did. I'm going to find out, Mr. President. And I, it's not like I'm Cory Book, I'm just telling you that I saw the video. My eyes saw it. I mean, it's, it, it, it is what it's, it's. I mean, please share that. I don't make this stuff up. And I'm just telling you, I'm here in D.C. Y'all think that Hollywood is strange. D.C. is more strange than Hollywood, and it's a lot smaller than California is. This place is, is compacted, like, with bullshit. It's like a colon that's never been cleansed. D.C. is <laughs> nasty. It's always been nasty. I'm just telling y'all. And a lot of black people live here. We didn't even go down to certain parts of D.C. We just, I know black people have never been down to Capitol Hill. They just stay the hell away from there. In fact, somebody, a uh, man tried to rape uh, a child up on Capitol Hill. It just, it's just, it just, it's trash. It's just trash. And uh, it's trash, I'm Dr. Judge. Short. Now, now, speaking of that, we're supposed to do the year in review. Uh, yeah, that's what so, I, was about to, I, was about to, I was about to transition you to that. Speaking, we're talking about trash. We're talking about politics. You, you sat on this very microphone, this very phone that you're calling me in on now, at the end of 2020, after Joe and Kamala got elected. 
And we talked on this very show about how they how we're not they're not going to do anything that they said they're going to do, and they're going to help out LGBTQ and immigrants. Since then, we saw them pass an anti-Asian hate crime bill. We saw them mm-hmm. pass legislation and money for Asians on businesses only. We've seen them pass mm-hmm. a Native American Hate Bill Act. So it, it, mm-hmm. it's all, and, and, and your girl Kamala has turned her back on all of those skiwee sorority sisters that she bragged about having it. Having. Let's talk about yeah. Kamala in, in this past year. Well, look, what are your thoughts? This. Well, I'm, I don't care who I offend. The dumbest ass political people in this country are stupid ass black women who keep voting Democrat 190%. The dumbest fuck people that ever ever walked the earth. And so having a pussy doesn't make you smart, although it is good to be plugged up into you. You're stupid. Okay, I'm just saying it. And already for 2022, who are they appealing to? Dumb fuck black Democratic voting women. They, they, they vote the stupidest of any people in the country. This is the stupidest ass people in this country are black women who are Democrat or die. And therefore the Democratic Party blindly because it's bad for black men. I'm not saying the Republican Party like black people either. But uh, the Democratic Party, black folks give just all of this support and get nothing in return. It's sort of like sisters that like to fuck men that are in jail and shit. I've never understood it. They have a dude that work a job. He's at UPS. He works for Amazon. And yet we'll go and fuck a nigga at Solar Dad or Pelican Bay. (laughs) I <laughs> just try to understand that makes that really does make sense, right? And for the sorry ass, simp ass black men, the Biden sexual niggas, uh, Biden and them have done nothing. Biden has brought back criminalizing uh, marijuana. Biden has stopped all this amnesty and shit that Trump was doing. Biden and them have cut off the opportunity zone shit. In fact, this Build Back Better shit, um, and Joe Manchin from West Virginia, I don't even care if he fucks his own cousins. I mean, like, the people in West Virginia, man, they be playing the dating game with their own family and shit. And they must have some good old sex, because none of them have teeth. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that, that's actually not true. They have teeth. Um, but anyway, it's not good. <laughs> okay, look. Uh, that Build Back Better thing was going to give amnesty to 11 million illegals. And every single dumb fuck black member of Congress supports it. I, f- I mean, I'm just telling you, um, until black people, when they see someone like Maxine Waters, the day that that nigga gets hit with a tomato, I didn't say a brick. I said a tomato or flour or egg. I don't want, I don't want anybody black in the CBC injured. I don't ever want them to become martyrs or heroes. I want them to be the butt of jokes. I don't want them in the emergency room. Okay, let me I repeat. No violence against black people in elected office. However, making fun of them, humiliating them, uh, making them the object of shame and scorn in our community is our duty. Uh, have I made myself clear, Brother Dewan? Yes, so yes no, you have. I, I have. I will know... Don't you dare hurt them. I don't want, I would rather them be people giggling and laughing. Like O'Reilly was saying that uh, Maxine Waters had on the James Brown wig. That bothered Maxine Waters more than if you had uh, sent a hate call. No hate calls. Hate's not going to get our people out of the thing. But you know what? Yes. A lot of laughter. Going back to the American Revolution. Didn't they tar and feather and they would do stuff and they would make their tax collectors drink the tea and shit that they would tax them on. They, they were doing crazy, silly shit. Since y'all don't want us to be free, we're going to do this to you. We go, you know, your kids are going to come home crying, wanting to beat their parents' ass for them having to go through so much embarrassment. Like Maxine Waters, Hulk Hogan looking daughter. And she looks like Fridge Perry and shit. And she's got, like, <laughs> big ass. I'm serious. She's got shoulders like the Incredible Hulk. I mean, people should clown Maxine Waters' crooked daughter. It's so bad because it's like she don't want no, nobody to know. In fact, Maxine looks way better than her daughter, man. I'm telling you. I, I mean, 
uh, have you seen Maxine Waters' daughter? That's such a picture of her. She does no, look like Fritz Perry it. with no, no mustache. With no mustache. Take, take a mustache off Fritz Perry, and that's Maxine Waters' daughter. <laughs> I haven't seen that. I'm looking for a picture no, right now. Go back and say, so the CDC has betrayed us. Uh, Kamala Harris, or Kamala, she was a hoe when she was a Howard. She's a hoe now. A hoe has no loyalty but to the last person that bust the nut or gave them a 20. That's 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 hoe's loyalty for you. A, a hoe is just trying to get theirs. So uh, Biden hates black people's guts. Nobody likes working there. Nobody likes working in the White House. Yeah, I've got a picture of her. My Look, he's a little nasty freak. It's come out that he would shower with his teenage daughter. <laughs> if I mean, can you imagine his pubic hair falling on his daughter's feet when in the shower? It was a little, a little, little Fianna sausage that's hidden in all the little uh, bear hair that he's got down there. Uh, he should take some of the hair and put it up on the top of that bald spot. It looks so bad. <laughs> I mean, it's just, he's a monster. I mean, he fucked up in Afghanistan. He told black people that we need to get up behind Mexicans. And y'all know that they, like, they're not like we are with hygiene and shit. You know, if you go down to Mexico, they've got trash in the street. <laughs> Come on, you've been down there. It's, I mean, to tell us to get behind them, no. That's an insult. That was a that was one of the biggest we, insults of the year, right there. We, yeah, but but people still follow him. Um, it, it's just sad. Now you know, January sixth. You know, I was up at the Capitol. No, I didn't try to go in. My dad was a chaplain for the Capitol Hill Police. I was trying to fuck around my dad's old job. Um. I saw them go in and I got a little tear gas and shit fucked my sinuses up, but I didn't do anything illegal. Um, and that's still going on. In fact, they've got those whiteys in jail here. Let me tell you, the niggas that are down in DC jail, they're beating the shit out of these white people from other places. I mean, it's almost <laughs> like the black people had a revolution and took over and shit. They're like beating and brutalizing these broke ass white people from all over the country. They're just catching hell. I'm talking about, when these people get out, they're all going to be like joining the Ku Klux Klan, getting lifetime membership, because those niggas have run it down in the D.C. jail. <laughs> they, they, I've, Good news. I've you, these people getting reparation ass whoopings in on these people that are in D.C. jail. You know, I, I, I've, you know, I was like that. I, that would be the one time in life they wish they weren't white down in D.C. jail right now. Because they, like, disrespect them, call them racist all the time. I mean, don't let them have soap and shit. People can't wash. They only get to be out in the sun for one hour. Say, well, man, why do you want more than one hour? I mean, you white. You don't want to be dark, so you should just stay out in the sun. I mean, you just, they're really not treating those people right. Not that they ever treated black people right in D.C. jail. But, man, there's some folks in there. I don't know if someone gave them the go-ahead. I'm like, this is like, fuck over white people time. But they are punishing Trump supporters down there. I mean, I'm going to make America great again by kicking your ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing. So the Trump supporters that were down there at the, at the riot getting their asses handed to them in prison. That's a good thing. Yeah. Yes, that's and, a look, good thing. I don't like violence in prison. I'm just trying to tell you that. And I told you people in D.C. are kind of stupid. They really are. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm from D.C. There's a whole culture here that goes back to before the Civil War of, like, having resentment against white people. That's really deep here. See, people forget before the city got gentrified, the Klan was afraid to come here because the people go downtown. People didn't even go downtown just to beat these Klan people's asses. I mean, I remember back in the day, they were beating people with bicycles. I mean, with real bicycles beating Klan people's asses. <laughs> See, this thing we don't I, hear I, about, like, the resistance to fight back. It was, it was, there was once a lot of no, fight no, back the, in the, D.C. The Klan came down to D.C., and the people, I mean, I, niggas took the day off from work to go down and fight their asses. And I think they took the police bikes and were beating the Klansmen with the bicycles. Literally <laughs> swinging, <laughs> hitting people's bicycles and thinking, oh my God. Oh my God. 
I'm serious. The police had to get out the way. They just let the people beat the Klansmen, by the way. Even the Klansmen came down here a couple. Their asses got lost, forgot their vehicles and shit. They were lucky they didn't go a few blocks over. And that's with almost nobody black here. I mean, well, the city's still half black. But back when the city was like 75%, oh, my God. I'm, I'm just trying to tell you, Brother Duan. They beat the Klan. They were taking people's hoods off and beating their ass. I took the hood off so I could see your face better. <laughs> you know, the Klan didn't come back for years. They're afraid to come now because the people are so wild. The police were afraid of people. The people went wild and the police, the police cars like, drove off and just at the people's ass to fight. And, 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 and the mayor of D.C. at the time, Mayor and Barry was down there, whoop the ass, whoop the <laughs> Mary Berry was a real one. That was one of the last so, great mayors so, that yeah, Black America had. He went down there and and was giving people so giving people souls of such shit as beating up the Klansmen. <laughs> so, oh my God! So these kinds of people are still here. So if some of them are working in DC jail, I know I know that they have literally just jacked some of those people up, and they keep bringing them in. And by the way, you know, they won't even let people come in for inspections and shit. To, so they get covered to beat their ass. This is, this is like really wild, man. It's wild. This, so okay, what, so, since you're in D.C., what's the temperament around D.C.? Because we saw all of the ski wee stuff Kamala was doing. We saw all of that nonsense to refer to get in office. What are the people that over locally in D.C. talking about now? What are their feelings towards her in this Biden administration, the black folks? See, I don't hang out much, but what I can say to you is Kamala's ass, she hasn't gone over to Southwest. I'm sorry, to Southeast. She hasn't been over in Ward 7 and Ward 8, places that are heavily, heavily black. She's not over here in 5. Obama's gone over. And, even, you know, and even that wasn't that big. And, you know, people have forgotten his little strange ass. So I think right now what's happening here in D.C. is people feel hopeless like, uh, I haven't checked. Let me check right now. Uh, murder is up here. I mean, people, like, I had someone shot two blocks from my house. Two people shot, one killed. There have been about seven or eight murders in my neighborhood. I mean, not far from me, so I'm not out much. I'm not trying to get shot. People are really, really angry. People are angry. And Biden, nobody likes Biden. Who gives a damn about him, really? I mean, you have to be a lonely fuck when you want to shower with young kids. Ugh. Yeah, you told me about that book, and I got it. I just I read the first like four pages, and I sat it down for a little bit. Then buy some creepy mo folks. He doesn't man. really. He doesn't really go deep. It's just clear that that laptop. It does show pictures of a blunder Biden, as I call him. That he's he's a, he's a freak. He's a creep. He has smoked crack. He's done all kinds of stuff. And this is what we put in the office because people were voting saying anybody but Trump. And it ended up getting somebody that, as far as on a personal it's level, is just as scandalous, just as dirty, just as, just as thuggish as, as Trump. And on a political level, the, a person that's... At, at least Trump didn't give out anything to anybody. Biden is over here giving resources to, to groups that are competitive against black America while giving but, black America nothing. That's the result of voting plan. anybody but. Trump had a platinum plan. That would have put, what, a half trillion to a trillion dollars in our community. At least he offered something. Maybe he was lying, but he made an effort to lie. Biden didn't even make an effort to lie. That's big. And we, and, and we voted him. anyway. And the fires and all the burning that took place in 2020 primarily occurred in opportunity zones, areas that Trump was trying to build up in black, black communities. And Trump, Trump gets blamed for fires burnt by people opposed to Trump and areas Trump's trying to redevelop for blacks. Huh. That's why a lot, a lot of black folks, wouldn't, a lot of black people aren't going to make it. And I don't worry that much anymore. I have peace about certain black folks not making it. In fact, something else, Trump wasn't forcing people to, to get vaccinated. 
Trump put hydroxychloroquine out as an option. Biden and them have always said, you've got to get a shot. Nope, now you got to get two shots. Nope, you need three shots. And pretty soon Israel's working on four. You'll need a fourth one here too. And that's, and that's after one thing he did promise during the campaign in this video of him saying it, you won't need to, we we're not, we're not going to force shots upon people. He said that a few times during his, during his campaign. He's a liar. Look, Biden belongs to pharmaceutical corporations and banks. Of course he's going to force people. I told people he's going to make you take it. But, you know, people like, well, fuck you. You, you racist Republican. You're biased and thinking, oh, okay, fine. You mean just because a person's registered as a Democrat that they're objective and they think? And so a lot of people are incredibly lazy, incredibly stupid, incredibly shallow. And they didn't think. And by the way, police murders for black folks are back up. This shit had gone down under Trump. It's gone back up under Biden. Murder all over the place. Inflation at an all-time high. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the decriminalization process of weed. I don't smoke, but Trump and them were moving in that direction, and Biden is for criminalizing weed. It's amazing. It's, it's amazing, amazing what, what a year, what, what a year does as far as what people perceive what would happen this time last year versus what is happening. I want to lighten it up a little bit and start turning in the direction of some good news. Bill Cosby got out. What are some yeah, of your thoughts? I know you followed that, you know, and I know you like me. You're not the biggest Cosby fan, neither was I. But the but the miscarriage of justice that put him in prison, and now he's right. out of it. What are some of your thoughts uh, now the year's over well, regarding the Bill Cosby situation? You, you know that all along, at a certain point, I Bill Cosby's like a fourth or fifth cousin to me. Um, so that's like your family uh i've only spoken to him i don't know him but um like i said to bill cosby regarding another cousin arthur ash and i told him bill they killed arthur they'll get you too if you're not careful because they poisoned my cousin arthur ash they gave him that aids they kill him because he's outspoken and um wow I don't think Cosby had the best people advising around him. That happens a lot of times. You trust who you trust, and sometimes who you trust don't know. But he beat it. I'm glad all those people down there are deviants. That judge who uh, convicted him had let another white man, didn't spend a day in jail for raping a boy for a whole year in government-owned buildings, and went and hugged the dude who raped the kid. And yet he came down on Bill like he did. You see what I'm saying? Um, this was all, it's like another potential distant cousin, Michael Vick. The Vick family comes from North Carolina, same places that my folks are from. And uh, this Jewish man who's deceased named Tom Lantos, a Jewish man, didn't like Michael Vick. And he put the hit on Michael Vick, and that's what did it. Sometimes there's a, a, a racist of one of the white ethnic or Anglo groups that doesn't like them. They put a hit. Bill Cosby had angered somebody, and they decided to make an example of him. He didn't do anything. And it's interesting how Hugh Hefner died and how they sold the house. And they probably buried the tunnels. You think that Hugh Hefner is checking the age of every girl whose drawers he took off in his, his, his mansion. Do you really think that there's not a girl that's built like she's 20, that's 14, that didn't try to get up in there and be freaky to be around stars? Dr. Really Short, think? I'll go one step further. The Playboy mentioned, I'm here, I'm, I'm, I'm here from, an, from L.A. <clears throat> it, was a, it was an open secret during the 90s, during the 80s, during the 2000s, as far as that's the time I've been around that they had underage girls all through that Playboy Mansion. You know, Dr. Jerry Buss used to talk about this kind of stuff, the former Laker, owner of the Lakers. Uh, Bill Coffey once even said it when it came down to those quaaludes. He said he, 
he learned how to do that down the Playboy Mansion because they called those thigh openers. Janice Dickens has talked about it. It's been so many women that have talked about being underage. Uh, what's that one girl that used to date Michael Jackson, the, the white lady? Um, Brooke Shields. Brooke Shields, 10 years old, down there at the Playboy Mansion. taking in, in, She's in photo spreads, 12 and 14 years old, in photo spreads. The Playboy Mansion was where it went down for when it came to them underage girls. It was a whole system of that going on in that mansion. And here in L.A., it was always it was known, but it was never talked about. And they and that man was able to die a hero. Yeah. Now, so to me, uh, uh oh, and someone else who used to visit the Playboy Mansion who who nearly left us this year, Jesse Jackass. Uh huh. Mm. You know, I always thought it was I something. Mean, I, mean, I always I thought it was something serious, funny because I am somebody. You know, I, I mean, always thought it was funny I mean, when it came to that, Dr. Short, because uh, I remember as a kid, I would always see, like, whoever was running for mayor, whoever was running for city council, it was like there were always fundraisers at the Playboy Mansion. And I used to wonder, hold on, why is the person running for district attorney, running for city council, running for the state senate, why does no matter what political level they're running on, why do they all have political fundraisers there? And you know, when, when you put two and two together, the fact that nobody ever went on and went after anything that happened at that Playboy Mansion, is it because they were getting photos of these people doing whatever they did at those fundraisers? I don't know. Hmm. I've been to you the know, Playboy Mansion. Um, I've, been to, I've been to two parties there. The parties I went to were more so corporate things. There wasn't no little girls there for those parties because it was like it was like All Star Weekend and that kind of stuff. Those type parties they wouldn't have it. But I'd have friends that would go back to the official Playboy parties. I never went to none of those. But those official Playboy parties, oh yeah, it was all kind of debauchery going on, and it did not matter what age you were as long as you were under twenty three for the women. Mm. And you know what? Speaking of that, I remember working for a mayoral campaign here, and they were willing to do a fundraiser at Comet Ping Pong. That place that they said they have tunnels underground for people to have sex with kids in D.C. Uh huh. It's at 50, 5037 Connecticut Avenue, Northwest Washington, D.C. Um,. It's going to open in, in, in 40 minutes. I said, why are we doing a political fundraiser at a ping pong pizzeria? And everybody seemed to know, no, and there were a lot of gay people. And I'm just telling you, they, they, and I was thinking, why are they so excited about this damn pizza place? You would think it would be a more dignified, I'm thinking, mayor of D.C. Why do we need to go comet ping pong and pizza? Huh. Then this this pizza gate thing came out. Remember the guy went in there with the assault rifle and started shooting. Because <laughs> uh, and that guy is he is something's wrong with those people. I don't know what they're doing. There's a lot of this nastiness as we talk about Epstein, who supposedly died last year, and Ghislaine Maxwell. You know, Jay Z's name is on the manifest. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering, uh-huh. I, I think that's, is that the crazy love that Beyonce singing? Oh, 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 right. And, 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 and Jay-Z, who I've never liked, and now he looks like, uh, looks like some reduced for quick cell, a stalk of reduced for quick cell broccoli and shit with that hair like that. God damn, nigga. That's wrong with that's, I don't know what the hell's wrong with Joe Camel's hair. I don't know what the fuck is going on. What do you mean, Joe Camel? He looks like a retarded uh, sea turtle. You know, like a sea turtle had some LSD in the plastic in the ocean, man. It's just <laughs> it's terrible. Uh... It's terrible. And, 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 and Kamala, she, you see her with, uh, with Charlemagne the Fraud. And, Stop talking like a report. And she started talking ghetto, and that's supposed to be showing backbone. Oh, 
Let me see what else we've had. I didn't like that. I'm glad you brought that up. Charlamagne asked that question, and she came out with the whole black scent, putting her finger up, trying to talk like a like a ghetto auntie. Kamala, if you don't sit your monkey ass down with that. Yeah, I guess it was trifling. And a lot of what happened this year was in California with Lee Elder, who, who looks like that crab that's under the sea with Ariel. <laughs> he does look like the crab under the sea under the sea he does remind me of the crab from that um and newsom who looks like he's had a bell's palsy stroke or something um and he's nasty he probably wants to be the first openly bathhouse newsom huh bathhouse newsom you know what's funny you said about the stroke there was an article it came out in the la times remember remember newsom for those who just tuning in we we're talking with Dr. Randy Short, the 2021 year review. Year review. We're jumping around to different things that happened this year and giving our point of view and takes on these things. But I'm glad you said something about Newsom. There was uh, an article that came out because he, for those who don't know, the governor of California, Gavin Newsom, about a month and a half ago just disappeared. No, no explanation, just didn't see him. And there was an article that came out in the LA Times of a staffer saying that he had, uh, he saw Newsom with uh, Bell's Palsy. I, I, I get, Bell's Palsy is the one where your mouth gets twisted to the right, right? Where it gets twisted. Yeah, well, now, yeah. now he'll do BJ's better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah they, so it was funny because an article came out in the LA Times from a staffer saying that uh, Newsom had his mouth twisted and he was looking like, basically, he was looking like Paul Bearer from WWF with his mouth all to the side. But I went back to go look for that article like two days later, Dr. Short. I couldn't find it. Because I, I, I read it in the app, scanning it, just, just scanning my news like I normally do. And then when I went back to go, because I was like, let me go find that article so I can post it and talk some shit about Newsom. Because you know I love talking shit about Newsom. And I could not find it. That shit got posted in, posted in the LA Times and taken down. And it has to be within 48 hours. Hmm. Yes, that's the kind of shit they do, you know, when it comes to the media. So for those of you out there, if you read something, if you see something interesting, screen grab it, screenshot it, take it, and put it in your files. Because the things that don't go in line, lockstep with the propaganda that they're pushing, that shit gets scrubbed from the internet, and it gets scrubbed fast. Mm. Yeah, and speaking of that, did anybody notice how... Michelle Obama looked like she gained two or three inches how much taller she was than Obama during the inauguration, how everybody had on purple. Yeah, she that maybe, maybe her heels are longer. I, I don't know. It's like Michelle looked like she was six five, man. She should have been the she could be in the men's uh, NBA as far as I'm concerned, but the women will do. Um She's just, I mean, Obama looked like he's shrunk. <laughs> it was just interesting. He's not wearing lifts in his shoes. Um, and then they had the little black girl. She's from Los Angeles. And you could tell she doesn't like men, the one that's reading poems and shit. Uh, and every time you turn around, they're advancing another black woman that likes pussy. <laughs> 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 I mean, they... Stacey Abrams and her sumo wrestler looking ass. Um, you, uh, this has been a year. This Stacey a year Abrams. And, and, oh, and, and they said she might run for governor again, looking like one of the Levert sisters. Like, come on now. Is that Gerald or Geraldine Levert? Ooh. No, Stacey yeah, Abrams, well, stop. I'm she does look like a sumo wrestler with the jury curl. Um, I'm just saying. And, 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 and she probably thinks of the jury. In fact, the thing that the sumo wrestlers wear is probably how big her thong is. Um, look, and then you had the little stud up in Chicago, Lori Lightfoot. Chicago's gone to hell. This has been a year of the black dyke, where black pussy-eating women that betray black men have been just given everything. Every time you turn around, they're pushing another stud. I mean, they're everywhere. It's like space invaders. Or should I say stud invaders? And I'm going to put this <laughs> out here. What what I want all the black women listening to this to make a pledge to be as hard on black women that are gay as they are on heterosexual. I'm sorry, not heterosexual. On black men that are gay. We have a double stand in our community. I hate it. I hate it. 
you know, you have to stud and nobody will say nothing. The dude is a punk and everybody, oh, you're a fan, you're a fan. You mean, you're here a trillion times since a man. It's a woman. You have this woman in Chicago who gave money to the Latin kings, to Latino gangsters to, to hurt and kill black women and babies. And when black women see this shit, they don't say nothing. Is it because y'all on code on the same fucking page? You know, had it been a black dude who was in the white men giving weapons to hurt black women? Oh, my God. This is also the year of the missing punk-ass black church. You haven't heard no nigger preachers in any way even try to make sense of what's been going on with COVID. That's a great None point. The church has been abstinent. I ain't seen a church this damn side of my whole life. And this we supposedly mm-hmm. going through the worst pandemic. And when it's time to have faith, I ain't heard T.D. Jakes. I ain't heard none of these MFs say nothing of well, substance Peter all Jake year. He's gotten a shot, but he probably likes getting stuck for things. Just look at his ass. It's so Warris looking motherfucker. I'm just saying. PD fake. There's something. I'm sorry. He's always been shaky to me. Woman now art loose. That's like a man saying he's letting a woman go. That's your main sermon? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I see why niggas becoming Muslim off of some of these weak ass ministers out here. I can't follow no dude. In fact, you too close, you'll smell the crack of his ass. Mm-mm. So, no, I haven't seen the preachers say shit this year. I've noticed this has been a year of sorry ass black celebrities. I mean, who the thought that Nicki Minaj's ass would have some courage as perverted as she is? Uh, and and in fact, she was speaking up for speaking out against limp dicks. Who the thought? Yeah, so she you know, actually spoke up uh, with this with this vaccine. Now, you know the fact that she married a pedophile and her and her and, her, and then she got pedophile families. You know, and, and 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 she makes terrible music that ain't no good for nobody. You know, but that's why I say there are no perfect messengers. But she, at least uh, someone with that track record, that background, had the nerve to stand up to BS when she saw it. Meanwhile, you got people with whole so called wholesome families and everything that is so-called in order, scared to say anything about it. And also, we have to give the Liar of the Year Award to LeBron James. Okay, nigga go ahead. Didn't take the Nigga didn't take the shot. All these people are faking, saying that they had the shot, and dumb fuck niggas who worship celebrities and jocks and athletes and singers and swingers and shit. Now they're out here gotten poison. These two fools they taking care of their health. By the way, have you noticed Kaepernick? I bet you his ass ain't gonna kneel on this. <laughs> and and he, he probably took his he took his shot of the ass. And speaking probably, of, and speaking of athletes, uh, big shout out to Kyrie Irving. Like I said before, he stood Kyrie his ground, God and God look God what God happened. God look what happened to, to Kyrie Irving. He stood his ground. Now he's about to be able to play. Roll games, and I guarantee y'all, mark my words right now, December 27th, by the time we get close to playoff time, he'll be able to play home games too. That's to you cowards out there. When you see someone like a Kyrie Irving standing for what he's saying, Kyrie Irving is pointing out something that we've always said. Power casts a big shadow, but power really ain't that strong. All you need is a few people to to put their heels in the ground and stand up for it. Power is going to concede. Because power, at the end of the day, power does not like disruptions in, in its chain of command. It does not like disruptions in, or any kind of disrupt to its flow. So when something disrupts the flow, power always concedes. And we see it right now with Kyrie Irving. No, God bless him. And by the way, if you saw Klan burn, his ass is sick. We, we have to dog that nigga. He didn't get nothing. He saved Biden, and Biden basically threw his ass under the bus. Um, frankly, you know, it's my uh, New Year's resolution that everybody black that's betrayed us gets the worst strain of COVID possible. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Um, oh, my God. Vernon Jordan died this year. That was the creepiest nigga ever. I remember going to a Christmas party, and he tried to pick up my god sister. Within seven minutes of me telling my god sister to play it off, Vern Jordan's going to ask you for pussy. Please don't blame me. And he did it within seven minutes. I just shake my head and said, damn. So Vern Jordan's gone. Uh, a lot of people who took the shot's ass is gone. You know? 
Oh, my God, the thing that really hurt me the most. Oh, my God, Mary Wilson of the Supremes died. Charlie Pride died. That just jacked me up. I cried. I couldn't eat. My, my birthday cake fucking dried up. So I was like sad in February because she died on the 50, 56th anniversary of the release of the song Stop the Name of Love in Their Heart. Stop. Pow. And, and the sad died. part about that, it was a lot of sad parts about that. She looked healthy. And you had just recently given me her phone number to interview with her, and I reached out to her. And oh, no, 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 that, that never had Mary. You mean, you mean? Oh, uh, that was a, uh, that was a, uh, that was a uh, Brenda Holloway. Brenda Holloway. Yeah, Brenda Holloway is fine. I spoke to her. Uh, her husband. Her husband, yes, her husband passed away. September first. Yeah, but so Mary, a lot of black people croak this year. You know, well, do you know Wanda Young died from the Marvelettes? On Christmas. Yes, I saw that. She was 78. So, yeah. 78. Yep, yep. And then, of course, I sent you that thing about them finding the OJ's member that had been missing in a plastic bag 40 years. Yeah, and one of the original OJ's members. Is they said he had been in a plastic bag since 1982? I was in high school when that shit happened. I was one! <laughs> Damn. Wow! Oh my God, people! Oh my people! So a lot of people have gone up out of here. Um, good news and the religious. The good news is that uh, Bishop Blake from out of your Los Angeles, uh, he's no longer head of the Church of God in Christ. And uh, Fred Price, who had a price, and he said if he's close to God, he's not going to die. Well, he's dead now. So, so. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to go back. I didn't know that Bishop Blake got is not is no longer the head of the uh, mm -mm -mm -mm. Church of God in Christ. And, 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 and in fact, we should say presiding bishop because when you said head, he's probably still getting it as old as he is. Um. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of transition going on, man. It's a lot of a lot of the old guard that was holding on. They're, they're either giving it up or they're or, or they're croaking and they're giving it up either way. It seemed like a lot this past year, 2021. I'm thinking, um, uh, the Bob Dole, who I met one time, it was really freaky. I was working, working as a butler, and Bob Dole walked all the way across this big room that had about maybe 600 people in it to shake my hand and have a conversation with me. It was shocking. Thinking, why is he trying to talk? With, and he made, he made, so I don't know. It turns out one of my friends is very tight with Bob Dole, that he wasn't anti-black. So I called my friend up to condole with her. And she was telling me a story about how Newt Gingrich and some other people told Bob Dole to fire the nigger, who's my friend. And Bob Dole says, um, y'all get the fuck out of my office. And in fact, I'm going to send that nigger on a tour on my behalf. Get out of my office. He cussed them out. Newt Gingrich and some other people. Uh, okay. And he said it loud enough for her to hear it. She's out in the hallway. And so um, the other things like uh, I'm looking over in Africa. Ethiopia's falling apart. A little racist ass uh, president of Brazil. A lot of people dying from Corona there. But notice Africa's been strong. This corona shit hasn't really hurt Africa that much. Oh, they killed the little punk-ass president of Haiti this year who wouldn't let the people be vaccinated. All the presidents were saying no to vaccination. Zimbab was was it Zimbabwe, somewhere in Southeast Africa, that president was killed too for not going along with the, with the vaccine? Yeah, a lot of things are happening. The Chinese disasters are falling down. This Evergrande is falling apart. So, I mean, the economy is going to be interesting. And booty check. You would think that a, a gay man would work well with transportation, moving stuff around. The size of the <laughs> but, uh, but no, nope. Stuff's all backed up, so, sort of like he is. Off the coast of Los Angeles, where you find the ships all backed up. You still see the ships out at sea that they haven't come in. And this inflation's a bitch. And, you know, I'd be shopping at all these. And, damn, it feels like I'm in uh, Whole Foods. Uh, price of eggs went up 60 cents. Ice cream up. Everything up. Greens up. 
cucumbers used to be about 40 cents. They're now about 65. Like, damn, everything up. Meat, shit, I ain't trying to buy no beef that's not frozen. I was yeah. the price of beef and shit. Damn, it's cheaper to get a divorce from, you know, from, from one of the Kardashians than to get some steak <laughs> and shit. No. Mm-mm. Um, I'm thinking, oh, they just honored Barry Gordy at the Kennedy Center. I'm very happy about that. The Temptations things back out. They plays back out. Um, hmm. There's so much. I'm just looking. Of course, that riot was incredible. I was there, brother. Man, those police, that's a setup. As this January 6th thing comes forward, it's going to be found out. I knew stuff was going to be bad at the beginning of January 6th. When I looked up and saw like just a handful of people guarding the Senate and the House, I'm thinking, I remember making a comment, thin screw line. That's all that you got up there. And so, yeah, back to January 6th. Yeah. Six people are out there at 8 in the morning. I'm telling you, these white people out there praying and shit, talking about God, blowing shofars. These people aren't trying to do no militant shit. But once Trump had that speech and those people went wild, that was something. I can assure you what I was trying to do was get different people to meet with D.C. police so there wouldn't be any problems. And that never happened. The meeting didn't happen. So if I should get pulled in, Brother DeWine, the evidence would be that I wanted people to sit down and talk to D.C. law enforcement so it would be peaceable. They'll have to let my ass go because it's, nope, I would never talk about going in any government building or tearing shit up. Damn. Yeah, that was that right yeah. there. That right there, it should have showed a lot of people what it really is. We live in a country to where when white white America, and this goes back to when they were in Europe, when they don't get their way, they turn the hell up. And so this goes out to you, all you appropriate Negroes. Well, you just need to have peaceful protests and don't do this and don't do that. Look, we live in a country when things don't go right, people turn the hell up. So when you mm-hmm. see the young black people out there doing things because one of their peers got killed, the last thing we adults need to be doing is telling them what they shouldn't be doing. God damn it. You know what I mean? When it comes down to it, they're going to... And it was an article that came out recently showing that in the states and in the cities to where people revolted against the police, against police violence, we saw police violence go down that following year in that same county, in that same city, in that, in that same area. So it is what it is. We live in a country where people voice their displeasure displeasure by turning shit up when they, when the white folks do it like they did this past uh, January 6th y'all black folks need to be doing what I was doing sitting at home grab your pap- popcorn get some drink and be entertained let it happen god damn it we, we are not here to sit back and talk about and last thing we need to be doing is jumping in and helping them we don't help them but we also don't sit back and tell them what they shouldn't be doing we let them watch it happen hell Government screw people well, over. I guess they got to deal with they got to deal with. They'll find out. And I'm thinking about that big Evergrande ship blocking up the Suez Canal. It's sort of like booty check and this man making love and shit. They got stuck and they had to do all this stuff to get it out. Um, that was interesting. That should let us know that there's going to be a problem with distribution and delivery of a ship born. That's almost like a signal because now everything has been stopped up ever since then. I'm about, about the Suez Canal thing. You're right. Couldn't get that done. And of course, we need to talk about the fact that in Australia and in France and in Germany, I mean, white folk are rioting all over the place over these vaccination shots. This has been ongoing in Israel. People still getting sick. All this breakthrough. I call this shit out here now Omni Coon. Because your ass is a coon if you don't realize that somebody is, like, pulling your string at this point. They keep coming out with new ones, these, like, you know, different sorts of um, of, of gourmet popcorn. Every every other week there's some new strain and shit, and everybody's got to be scared. I'm tired of that. That's sort of like a sequel to a bad movie. Um... I'm thinking about um, the border and all the people coming across, getting shot and stopped. 
and the millions of people and all this stuff happening, how they're dropping people everywhere. They're not even vaccinating their asses, just dropping people. And the dude that was whipping the Haitian people's asses and shit with his belt. Damn, I, I, it's like I was traumatized. I felt like I was back with my unfriendly family uncles and shit. Remember, they take out belts. I would just beat everybody's ass. I'm going to sit down right now. I'm going to just beat everybody, you know. Um, that was interesting. And, of course, Biden was able to elude that. And, by the way, what happened to um, that White House spokesperson? What's her name? Uh, Pierre, whatever that broad's name, little stud. That's a stud. Uh, John, yeah, well, we know we know E.J. Johnson, I mean, uh, is about to quit Kamala Harris. Uh, oh, what, yeah, Simone Sanders, and then, Simone and then the stud Pierre, I don't know where like, she at. She does look like Magic Johnson Jr. She does. Yeah, yeah. And, she, oh, isn't that nice to see Chris Cuomo's ass get punk, put off? Now he can't have his affair with Don Lemon anymore. <laughs> and, 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 um, and, by the way, this guy's talking about Don Lemon trying to get... Don Lemon offered a half million dollars to the dude who said that Don Lemon grabbed his, 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 his tackle and beat and offer a half million dollars to me. I think you did it when you offer a half million. Yeah. Um, so they may get him. And uh, come on. Uh, ask some people to put some stuff up in the chat room. Because so many different things. I mean, you know, we could talk about Afghanistan. People hang gliding and shit off the plane. I don't even think that's real. You couldn't get on the fuselage of the plane and hold on. That was Hell no. Nah. and shit. You and drop off by the time the thing tips his nose up. Chat room. What are some things yes, y'all want to adopt this uh, short to cover that happened in this year in review? Oh, someone just said Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle. If you watch the show, first and foremost, what did Dave Chappelle say that was really offensive, honestly? That dick and pussy exist? I mean, that's... People going to cancel him for saying dick exists, pussy exists, that man and woman exist. So uh, Dave Chappelle said what most people think. Um, the, the sad thing is all the weak ass nigga celebrities and politicians and religious figures. White people spoke up for Dave, but not black people initially. Think about that. Um, Dave Chappelle didn't tell you that he hated gay people. He didn't say he supported persecution. He didn't. He really didn't say anything other than stop bullying black people with your sex. That's all he said. And you have Stop all of these guy. blue check, black, useless Negroes that were afraid to defend that. I mean, he didn't, he didn't, Dave Chappelle, Dave Chappelle don't hate gay people. I'm not saying this to impugn his character. Um, you know, Dave Chappelle's mama's birthday was the 20th. She's 84 years old with good friends. I love her dearly. I was talking to his sister the night before last because one of the Islamic leaders in Columbus, Ohio was murdered and thrown in a trash dump with the, within the last few days, y'all, in Columbus, Ohio. So I called because I know that their family is Muslim and I'm certain that there's some connection. So I talked to Dave's so I mean, family. They, they're not this crazed homophobic family being cruel to people that are gay. This is just, if you know anything about these people, they're like regular black folk. We got gay cousins and so forth. We don't agree with them. We make jokes and shit, but they still are cousins, right? It's the white fascist, racist, bigot, degenerates who have made war a way to make themselves a persecuted minority is to make black people the enemies of gays right where in reality they're white first and then they just constantly attack us alongside the little black tricks that screw white people that are gay that's what's going on a little ugly butch thing that has hiv that was attacking him thank god they lost their job and they can go back to what they do best which is selling their body for sex and infecting people yeah i said that it was all bullshit Dave Chappelle didn't do anything wrong. Dave Chappelle didn't get up and say being gay is a sin and God's going to judge their asses. Okay. 
In fact, that's what preachers are supposed to tell people, but half of their asses are doing that shit too. So, <laughs> Dave, so no, Dave Chappelle, he, he told the truth, and it's interesting. Kevin Hart's ass, rather belatedly, has come out and supported him. Some people, but you know what? There's one bitch nigga I got to talk about. Cedric the Entertainer has attacked Dave Chappelle. And I'll tell hey, you that. That disappointed me, that, man. That that Chester Cat looking motherfucker has a lot of nerve. He shouldn't have said shit. Yeah, Why I, do you have to attack him and say he's gonna be knocked down? Are you mad you're not the biggest one? You're not making eighty million a year? You've been out there long enough. Doctor Short, let, this is where I gotta jump in. Thank you for saying that. I'm glad you brought that up. Because it's law again, this goes back to a lot of the black people who ask me what is being on code. On code means even if you didn't have, didn't like Dave Chappelle's special, even if you think in private that they're going to knock him off, like said, just shut up. The last thing we need is other black people, especially the black men going out there. When you see a black man step out and say what he said, which even, it should not even be made controversial because comedy is comedy. Everybody gets it. It was never controversial when he talked about black people. So what he said about gay should not have been controversial. So even when you as a black person see something like that going on and you have your thoughts, you never take those thoughts to them folks. Don't even, why are you even talking to them about it? If, if, if you don't have nothing yeah. positive to say in support to, in, to make things better, shut the fuck up. Right. Well, he's, that really just hurt his ass. As I said, I saw it, I fell asleep on it because Dave was saying stuff that as you know, brother, when uh, my fellowship, we all said no to the uh, Equality Act. I said far harsh shit a long time ago. Shit, I don't care. Put me in your damn magazine. Okay. Um, a person busting a nut in a woman who's got an egg that's going to meet with sperm and make babies very different from doing a blowjob with a person of the same sex. I don't care if both allow someone to have a climax. One will result in a life being born, and one will just be, well, you'll need another hit later because nothing really comes of it once that moment's gone. Uh -huh. Are you hearing me? Yeah. And people do, adults do what adults do. I, I want to uh, make a slight uh, change in direction because I, 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 this just came to my mind. I don't know if you've heard of this. We're talking about these, these, these Negroes, Negro puppets. There's this new show that's going to be coming out on Showtime pretty soon with this uh, Negro named uh, Kamal Bell. And it's a series talking about We Need to Talk About Cosby, where they have all of those approved, uh, I call the approved Negroes, uh, Jamil Hill, and they're on the show. And they're basically talking about black Bill Cosby's relationship with black America and basically why black America needs to have a reckoning when it comes to Bill Cosby. I'm bringing this up for one reason, Dr. Short. In 2022, I see one of the major battles that black America has is a, the battle between black people who don't give a fuck, black people who are black first, and these Negro puppets who talk black, black, bliggity black, but all they are behind that cloak of black, black, bliggity black are professional white ass kissers. What do you see coming forward in 2022 with uh, black America that has black people's interests first against black America who has kissing white ass first? What do you see coming between us? Well, I see black people uh, doing it in a couple of ways. One, a lot of people are not going to return to the churches that have uh, become vaccination centers to help kill off our own people. A lot of people are never going to go back. They're never going to give. They're never going to put up with that shit. Um, a curse has been broken over Negroes just going along to get them off. So I see a lot of things changing, one, for that institution. Number two, I see people turning on uh, feminism in our community. I even find women that are sick of this stuff. They're sick of the Lori Lightfoots. They're sick of the Keisha Lance Bottoms. If you look, 
I think it's a man that's going to be the new mayor in Atlanta. This, you're starting to see stuff. You're also going to see people turn on elected coons. The community, the black community already doesn't like this new Negro mayor that they're going to have. They already don't like him because he's talking down to people. I see there's going to be a fight against uh one, uh, there's going to also be people kind of tired of, I hate to say it, but I'll call it, we've got a lot of wastrel black people, folks who prey on us, who rob, kill, cheat, drug, rape. And we understand racism exists. We experience difficulty. But you don't have the right to make our lives a living hell because you fucked your life up. What do I mean? I, an example, more and more Negroes are going to be closed carry and a lot of folks are going to get shot. You know, like, like the little junkie brother or cousin or friend that's at the Jets will bang on the door or do stuff and you can't reason with them, right? You don't want to call the cops. They'll shoot everybody. You're going to see a lot of black folks get shot <laughs> by a range of people. They're going to be shocked at who's got a gun. There are going to be some women that are going to shoot some no good dudes that beat up on them. You're going to see a lot of people get offed because it's, what else can you do? You know, money's tight, there, inflation's tight, all, and, and you're going to come in, you're going to take my car, you're going to drive off with my baby in the backseat. Now I'm going to shoot your black ass. Dr. Short, hey, you you had you hit on a very, very, I, I want to expound upon a point you just hit upon about people about that. And again, here at the show, we do not advocate violence. We're not talking about what we wish would happen. We're just talking about how the landscape is playing out and what we see happening more often. But I want to piggyback on what you said because there's a Supreme case, there's a Supreme Court case that's uh that comes out of New York about around concealed carry. And if the Supreme Court, which the people are saying it looks like they may strike it down, we won't know till June. But if they strike it down, it's gonna basically end all of these concealed carry laws nationwide, California, New York, Chicago. Cause basically all all the laws against holding a gun and concealing a gun they're only in heavily democratic areas that are fully populated by black people. But since gentrification is going on, and we see a lot of white people come back to this na these neighborhoods, we're seeing the laws change nationwide. And if the Supreme Court strikes that down, we're going to see concealed carry happen on a massive level in this country because uh, because of that. So that's one thing that go that contributes to what you're saying. The other is, I noticed when I've, the last year and a half, when I've gone to the gun shops, when I've gone to the gun ranges, I have seen more black people, black women, and young black men with guns, learning how to shoot guns, getting their license than I've ever seen in my life. Usually, the only time you saw young black men in their 20s with guns were the criminals. The, the black people with their heads on straight, generally black boys in their 20s, don't really deal with guns like that outside of the Deep South here in California because of the programming that we had by this Democratic um elected officials and, and media that we have. But here in California, I've seen so many non-criminal, head-on straight, young black men in the shooting ranges, uh, buying guns, black women in their 60s, in their 40s, coming together and getting they, they strap on because we understand that it's a lot of shit going on in this country. And what I've seen with my observation, you're not going to see this shit on the news, but with my observation... I've seen black America respond to the threat appropriately in my for the first time in my life. And brother, there was a politician up in Illinois, Chicago, he and his wife and their Mercedes, and some people tried to carjack them, and the husband and wife shot it out with the thieves. And they and they won. Um, yeah. black lawless people. You motherfuckers who rob and rape and pillage. And you're our internal Ku Klux Klan and Nazis. A lot of people. The scriptures say in Proverbs, he being often reproved, hard in his heart and stiff in his neck will be suddenly cut off without a remedy. In lay terms, a cap's going to be busted in your ass. There's some of us who, who, who love our community who volunteered, I'm thinking about my mom's volunteer, my dad's volunteer, my mother being in the hospital with the kids shot five and six times. 
praying over people, hoping for niggas to turn a corner and get right. And then there comes a point where judgment comes. And by the way, don't be surprised. And there's going to be a whole lot. Let me tell you who's going to really start feeling it. There's the young men and these older men, junkies, folks who could never get off of drugs. Folks will put a bullet in you and the cops and other people are going to give people applause. And they're going to be, look, that case that just happened up in Michigan, Oxford, Michigan, where the mama bought the gun for the kid. He went and murdered the people at the high school. And now the mother has a half million dollar bail on her head, as does the father have a half million. Black, batshit crazy bitch mamas who had to fuck every thug that they could open their legs for and make criminal vice and let it loose on the rest of the community. You're going to see black criminal moms get arrested for the activity of their children. If they'll lock up a white woman, sisters, they'll lock your asses up too. For way too long, we've had this shit out of control. I'm saying this to you as a teacher from the public schools, have the mothers come up and attack the teachers and shit. It's like, damn. I mean, and, right? We have a lot of lawless men and women and this stuff has to stop. Folks, it, it, I'm telling you, it has to have, stop. You're gonna have you're gonna have some people that want to shoplift in the store now that you've got this uh, smash and steal. You're gonna see folk getting shot like like, and folk are gonna cry racism. And yes, I think yeah, they do hate you. Yes, they hate our guts. But why are you stealing in this store? Yeah. Yeah. You know, yes, they do hate you. Yes, they do hate us. And then again, if I have a store, you'll rob me. You won't say, hey, brother, I'm not going to, I'm going to cut you some slack. Nope. And by the way, my friends, uh, anticipate in, in 2021, I see this movement of people recognizing that, hey, America's my home to genuine FBA, ADOS, or as I say, DAFTAs, descendants of Aboriginal and forcibly trafficked Africans in America. A lot of foreign Negroes that play games, the Cardi B's and others. It's going to get interesting. It's going to be very interesting. Um, I, hey, I, I want to expound on that. Interesting. It is going to be interesting because, Dr. Show, one thing I'm saying is, you know... They, the people, and of course, this doesn't go to all immigrants, but this goes, we're going to appropriately apply it to those who act in this manner. They work at their best when they're able to blend in with us and be these sleeper cells and pop out and play black, black, bliggity black, and then go back to their own little communities. With us outing this nonsense, with us outing this bullshit, what I see is, you know, coward comes, cowards go. The heat's going to start getting so heavy, a lot of these people are going to have to start going back home. Oh, well, yeah. They, they are going to have to go back home. Look, this war in Ethiopia that they're not really reporting about, do you know the U.S. government is talking about going into Ethiopia for a war? Wow. Oh, over the humanitarian stuff. I'm not saying I want it. I don't advocate it. And I'm saying we have a huge number of Ethiopians in the country. Some Ethiopians are cool. Some Ethiopians absolutely hate our guts. Let's just be honest. And you know what's cold about it? The Tariq pointed this out on this broadcast I was watching yesterday. The Ethiopian prime minister basically talking about black Americans and the reason why we don't have no money and comparing us to Jewish Americans is basically saying that since slavery, all we do is look in the past. He was talking big shit about us. And his country is all fucked up. Guess what? Guess what? Oh, yeah. the, chi the Chinese economy is slowing down. It is. The Chinese are going to cut off and demand that the loans for the subway and all that they've built in Ethiopia be paid. How are they going to pay the Chinese? I don't know. They better pay them. All right. It's going to be interesting. A lot of African countries, you heard Uganda had to give its international airport uh, in Entebbe to the Chinese. Yeah. 
Um, a lot of the stuff that you see from the Caribbeans and Africans, a lot of this is Chinese money that's got to be paid back. Hmm. And China's in trouble. They can change the terms of their loans and all this other kind of stuff. This would yoke the hell out of them. I'm not advocating for it because I'm not mad that the Caribbean or Africa's developing white uh, Western Europeans wouldn't do it. But the way that people come and act here and treat, hmm, someone's going to pull their coat. We're not going to be the ones that do it. I compare what's happening in Ethiopia now to 1986 when people cut, we are the world and people are sending money to Ethiopia. Notice that no one's doing it now. Right, it's it's uh, th- th- there, yeah. there are people dying in Nigeria. Nigeria is having Christian and Islamic uh, wars, thousands of people being killed, and but all of us have had someone from Nigeria try to scam us on Facebook. And people are tired. We get robbed just as if we collected money the last five hundred years after they sold us. Okay, it's people are going to be looking at people very differently. And so that that's this, this is a generational shift. You see, the boomers help everybody. If we just help everybody, we'll be better. That's not true. You got to help yourself, and then you can help others. That's what our generations are saying. Uh, COVID. The the good thing is a whole lot of older black people, the kind like I remember. I used to go to a church in Tennessee, and the head of the youth choir was a woman that was old that had enough moles to be a bionic chocolate chip cookie. She, said, <laughs> she couldn't sing, but she was in charge of young people. The young people weren't really into her, but she had had that position, and therefore. She has a position. The black community is very undynamic. The boomers and other people are locked in traditions, even if they don't work. You can't ask for change. I talk to people that know little nigger preachers who won't use a cell phone, who won't use the Internet. They hate all the new technology. Everything has to be like it used to be. And any suggestion of any kind of change is a disrespect, and you didn't show them their props. Right? That's my mom's generation. just... Yeah. And people are stuck up, stuck up under this. Their ass has got to die and go somewhere, and they're dying. And they're the ones that ran out and obeyed, and they got the shots. You're going to see a whole lot of older black people go. With the retirement, a lot of people are retiring from jobs. A lot of people are going to die from these shots, and they're going to have heart attacks and strokes and other things. And some people are going to get positions that they never ever thought they could get before. They had been locked out of couldn't get into it because of who they were. Some things are going to end up falling into people's hands because there's no one else to do it. Are you understanding me? I'm, I'm understanding you completely. And I, I'm, I'm so I'm thinking hmm, just the other thing is I believe that the younger people are not going to vote in large numbers in 2022. If black folks don't vote enthusiastically, the Republican wave is going to be it's going to be like Hawaiian punch poured all over a map. It's going to wash over. I'm just saying Pelosi losing her position, Schumer losing his position. Uh, do you realize that the Republicans win the House? They're going to impeach Biden or Kamala or both. You don't think they're going to do that? <laughs> I'm glad, Dr. Short, I'm glad you said that because that was actually going to be my final question of the day. Um, I've been I've been noticing over the last, really over the last six months, um, they're, they're 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 angling uh, towards Kamala Harris on like getting because like they, they, it looks as if they're angling towards getting her out more so than they are angling towards getting Joe Biden out. It's been a lot of articles recently talking about that. Do you think right. Kamala Harris? is going to make it through 2022. I think, um, one, there's a question, constitutional question, over whether Kamala Harris even qualifies to be vice president. Were her parents, her parents weren't citizens when she was born here. Shouldn't she be a citizen of Jamaica or India versus the United States? I'm just saying. Yeah. She's born before that 
the, the, the whole immigration law changed in 1965. She's a year older than me. She's born 1964. When she was born, that immigration stuff didn't apply. She's not really a U.S. citizen to some people. Oh. She, she's lived in Canada more than America in her formative years. I mean, that's weird. She's a British Commonwealth. How did she just get to move to Canada? Because her mother's British Commonwealth. Uh -huh. Her father's British Commonwealth. Kamala Harris is a Jamaican nationally. The way that Jamaicans see it, you can't hold two nationalities and be president of the United States. Or vice president, but she's, she's doing it. People have not held these people to the same standard they would hold. The ordinary black person. Same way Obama. I don't know what the hell he is. But he's somebody, you know, that don't like us. And Obama could easily be Indonesian 100%. There are a lot of Indonesians that look like Barack Obama. A lot of us don't understand that uh, black people live all over this world. And there are all kinds of people... Obama could easily be a Malaysian or an Indonesian without any African recent ancestry. Or his father is Frank Marshall Davis. Uh -huh. Now, I don't think that black folks are going to vote. I believe that the whole issue of pedophilia in the school textbooks, which is going to be used, rolled out by the Republicans, which may even make some black folks vote against Democrats that are pushing this garbage on kids in school. I think that um, we could see, if we're fortunate, we could see a couple of our stalwart black folks, if they've really been vaccinated, who've been misleading us, drop dead. As I speak, you know, Klan burn. He has COVID. Cory Booker has COVID. And we haven't seen Maxine. Where is she? And why is she flying on planes without masks? Probably trying to infect everybody else. Um, we, we, we're going to have some shifts. And I actually think we're going to see people trip. Because now you're having outbursts you did in 2020 where you have black mayors. What does a black Democratic mayor mean to you, really? What does a black Democratic mayor mean in Chicago or Atlanta or in D.C.? And so I, I see people tripping. I see younger black folks tripping. Look, people's lives have been put on hold for two years. Right about that. Formative years, important years. I mean, you can't go to the prom, can't go to this, can't go to the movies. Can't... Do you really think that young people aren't going to flip at some point. Okay, the opioid deaths are up, suicide is up. All this pressure on the younger generations, there's going to be some pushback somewhere in here. And, ooh, the thing I left out, Biden has promised to allow the student loan people to be let loose on all the people who owe for student loans. And mind you, people haven't paid in like two years. Now they're going to come back after people. Inflation is at an all-time high. Food is at an all-time high. Gas is at an all-time high. People aren't working. And then these people are come and try to get this school money. Do you realize how many folks, the popularity of Biden, it's going to go down starting February 1st. When all these people start getting all these school loan calls, how about white folk getting called, has hassle, school loan calls. And Biden had promised to do something to help people around school loans. And he said, psych, I'm not going to do it. And then he gave a 30 day, what, a 90 day reprieve and just pushed it back to April 1st or whatever. But they ain't going to mm -hmm. do nothing. Okay, two more. That's just two more months of building steam. Yeah, no, they need to they need to let this stuff go. He's not going to do it. He's a, a slave of the banks. You might find something freaky like imagine if the same way the money that people owe in student loans, they gave businesses what about 8 trillion dollars. They gave all this money to businesses over COVID. 
they could have wiped out student debt, just said, hey, look, cancel it. But uh, to try to keep people down, they'll do this. So You, you know, man, Dr. Short, I want to address this because because people out there that may be saying, how can the government cancel student debt? Won't the banks won't the banks go out of business? Let me answer that question for people out there that may be thinking that. When it comes to student loan debts, the reason why banks are able to lend freely is because they're getting the money from the government and taxing an interest rate on top of free money given to them by the government. So when you take out your hundred thousand dollars in student loan debt, the, the that hundred thousand isn't coming directly from the bank. That hundred thousand is totally backed by the United States government and is given to the banks on line of credit at a zero percent interest rate. From there, the bank tax on their rate and the the profit that the bank make is basically a, a win win for banks. They don't have to use their own money and they get to charge uh, uh, interest on money that's not theirs. So if the government turns around and says, hey, look, you don't, we can, well, we, you don't have to pay it back. It won't be the banks losing money because the banks never lent the money to begin with. The banks gave you a line of credit from the government. It will be coming from the government and all the money that you made in interest payments over those years, that was strictly profit to them. So it literally wouldn't cost the banks anything for the government to cancel student loan debt other than future interest payments. So the government can stop that, but Joe Biden ain't going to do it because he don't want to because he don't fuck with us. He fucks with the banks, not the people. Exactly. They could do that. That would completely change the lives of tens of millions of people. I believe that there's going to be a movement for bank debt forgiveness and whoever's going to be president is going to have to let this stuff go. And by the way, with Omnicoon and whatever else, and they're going to have some stuff, this is going to roll into next year. And if they release anything else, this may go for another year or so. How are people going to be able, they're going to have to decide between paying the loans for school or starving to death. People are simply not going to pay. Um, and the people already are not paying. They're already not paying. And, and you know, I kind of hope he does bring it back because all it takes when it comes to this debt society that we're in, all it takes is enough of us to not pay. If everybody don't pay, what the fuck are they going to do? What can they do? Nothing. It'd be just like this Kyrie Irving situation. Somebody decides I'm not going to play by the rules. At some point, they're going to come back and say, uh, well, we got another plan for you. How about how about this over here instead of that? And the longer you hold out, the better the deal is going to be for us. So I'm interested to see what will happen if they do bring it back. Yeah, well, no, they bring it back, I don't care. And the thing I also like is we're going to see those guys who killed Ahmad Aubrey get sentenced. Mr. Chauvin, who choked Floyd George to death, he's going to have to go and do real hard time. The woman, uh, what's her name, Potter, that killed the guy up in, in Minnesota again, she's going to have to do real time. We're beginning to see people go to jail. In fact, even with the January 6th people, there are a lot of white folk who did all this crazy stuff in D.C. who never thought they'd get into any kind of trouble because they're white and their asses are getting four and five year sentences. It's blowing their minds. As this country changes white privilege for middle class and poor whites is being diminished. Aside from the population in America not growing. And what that really means is that a significant number of people are dying that are are white Americans. You have this huge number of, of, of cotton-haired white folk. They're in their 80s and 90s. They've been on Social Security 45 years, and, they, and they're just hanging on. A lot of these people are leaving but between the shots, you name it, and you're going to see this population shrink. You're going to see a lot of changes in politics. In fact, the voices of racism will become more shrill but as you said, brother, more black folks are buying guns. That's intelligent. It's better to have a pair of a, a pair of, of Smith and Wesson than to have Michael Jordan. He hates us more than white people do anyway. <laughs> you, you're going to you're going to see 
some shifts, even with police. Um, we've had the police murder folk here in D.C. I didn't hear about a man who was shot in the car 10 times sleeping, and they smoked the car up, and that's been hidden from the news. This has happened. Now they don't quite know what's going on. So I think that even with the women, the little racist Karens with the camera phones, I thank God for camera phones, more and more people being caught doing racist stuff and losing their jobs, getting fired, getting exposed. As more and more people don't take this, but expose even individuals get ruined off of doing something. This didn't happen when I was coming up. Someone white did something bad to you. If you didn't fight them back or whatever, you just accept that that's the way life is. Now you can turn your camera phone and these people freak out because they don't want people to see. There used to be an, an, an impunity and an anonymity to hurting people. This is changing. And I believe the Obama curse is going to break. Why do I say that? I, you know, Obama came on the scene about almost 20 years ago. People are going to wake up and they're going to start holding black coons accountable. Yes, sir. And that's why, my brother, that's why I'm telling you I do have a magazine called The People's Report. Got to work on that. Got to work on the other one. I'll talk to you offline about that. And just don't be surprised if you don't start seeing a move to go after black people that are corrupt, that have betrayed black people. Right now, our brothers like Tariq, our brothers like Black Truth and Black Authority and others, they're doing, and Vicky, they're doing a stellar job. Talk about racism and every now and then they'll put up coons. But a day is coming where we're going to start dealing with corruption in our own ranks. And you asked me about Kamau Bill. Now, you know, he's married to a white woman and he's not trying to get a haircut. That should let you know something. When you see black folks that look wild, that wouldn't fit into an ordinary black setting, you know something's up. I heard about that. I noticed anytime I see a black person that looks extra black, either with a big afro or huge locks, and they really, those are usually the biggest coons on earth. Yeah, they're, car they're cartoonish. And so um, Kamau Bell is on CNN. Everybody knows CNN has a, a racial, a race. They have a racism class action suit against them for how they treat black people there. And that's probably why no matter what Don Lemon does wrong, he doesn't get fired because if you got rid of Don Lemon, um you wouldn't have really anyone else black on CNN when you think about it. And who watches CNN? Black women. If black folks stop watching CNN, that network would collapse. We're the ones watching it. That's why they keep Don Lemon on there. Um, black folks need to break with doing what they've always done. I see hip hop dying. I see a lot of stuff dying. A lot of people are not as interested as they used to be. Even the little Nigerian dude that got all the people burnt up in Texas. What's his name? Harris something. Travis Harris. Travis Scott. Yeah. That's right. Whatever, whatever the hell his name is. Travis Scott. He's a piece of shit. And you know, um, I'm glad you said that, Dr. Short, because what I, what I, wanna, uh, I wanted to say this before we uh, got off. Because I don't, I don't see hip-hop dying. This is what I do see dying. Well, all these rappers getting killed, all of this, I got more money than you, I'm, I'm better than you because I got more material items and I'm going to shoot you, those, that, that style of music is dead. And the people who perpetuate those lifestyles, that, they're literally dying off. I think what's happening is, it, you, know, you know how it is, it's always darkest right before dawn. It's always the roughest, rightest things before things get better. I think right now what we're transitioning to is we're going to start seeing a different form of hip-hop. We're going to start seeing true hip-hop come back. And what true hip-hop is, is revolutionary music that that feeds black revolution. It feeds the culture. It gives the culture something, some, some, some musical encouragement, musical direction. Mm -hmm. The same way James Brown in the late 60s was soul music. The same, that's coming well. back. This whole you era of degeneracy is dying out. I think in 2022, you know, 
We're going to start I'm, saying I'm that be, person with a message come back to the top of the charts. I'm going to be doing some recording this year. You're okay. going to laugh. I'm going to be doing something with some hip hop people. Oh, that's cool. And it's, it's going to be on Cory Booker. And I'm going to be messing with Coons. Oh, yes. I mean, I'm going to have fun. You know, now I did do a, like a like a little bogus Elvis Presley karaoke tribute to, uh, what's her name? Uh, Sugar T up in Oakland. Yes. But uh, that's a wonder, the wonder of, I mean, did Elvis Presley, I'm a, a mulatto Elvis Presley, but we're going to like get down on some coons. I actually think, one, I think my paper and the other such people, so many people have been so heavily censored on YouTube and Twitter and until and I see other people creating other opportunities to put stuff out there. And I need to let you know next year that two documentaries, I know I'm in two, I might be in a third one. Uh, and I forgot to say, we came out with butt breaking this year. Tariq's butt breaking really hit home. It came out before Dave Chappelle's show. That buck breaking did very well. I don't know how much Tariq sold, but I know Tariq did well with buck breaking. And that went around in our community. I know Tariq's got another one that's going to drop on the Maroons. That's going to be talking about resistance. I think it's going to do well. I know it's going to do well. Um, there's another documentary uh, I think that's going to be a buck breaking too. I hope I'm in it. You know, I'm going to try to tell the truth as best I know how. Um, I'm also going to, there's one on Roger Stone that I'm in that's going to come out. And I mean, I'm just telling the truth, even about that bitch with the Shaka Zulu earrings on that was, that purchased herself that was on the jury. <laughs> All the stuff that's going to come out. It's, it's going to come out. And um, by the way, Brother Dewan, you know, when my book hits, I look forward to it. Just maybe one thing I'm looking forward to next year is when the book comes, when a book hits, you know, I'm going to be called a sellout and Uncle Tom, he runs with white supremacists. I was trying to tell this sister, I says, Almost everybody white is a white supremacist, even if they don't want to be. It's in their home. It's in their schools. It's in their church. Why are you, you know, you're telling me that I have to try to find perfect people to deal with. That's what I can't find black people that aren't white supremacists. <laughs> I mean, so that's the truth. Is, it's I hard to find a not, black person that's not a white supremacist, but go ahead. If you, if you watch me, you won't see me act against the best interests or survival of black people. I says, you look at everything I say and do. I says, if you watch it, it, I'm not out here trying to, like my cousin Bill, I didn't think Bill Cosby was right to go out and say all the stuff he said about poor black people. I, this is one of the things I was angry about. Okay, you'll never see me do shit like that. Okay, and I always tell people, stand up, strap up, Help one another, respect each other. In fact, don't even hate white people. Don't hate anybody, but love yourself. Right? Respect yourself. Love God. That's the stuff you hear me say. I've had someone say, you sound like an Uncle Tom. I just, hmm, Uncle Tom. Based on what? Did I ever say, let someone take your body and inject you? Did I ever say, give your money to someone that hates you? I'm, I'm not talking like that. And I'm not always, when I talk about black people, you don't hear me like, you know, I, I send you stuff, brother. I'm not always putting black people down. You know, I look at people like, say, Candace Owen to others, and they're always attacking black people. They never give a defense for black people. I'm a vindicationist. If I see black people doing something you don't like, or this, I will explain to you, What's wrong that's been done to people? I won't say it's right for someone to rob someone, but I will tell you that they're hungry. Do you get where I'm coming from? Um, I know other folks are not balanced. I think that there's going to be a new thing that comes. I want to tell you in 2022 that Republicans 
and Dema Coons are both going to be attacked. And what I'm leading up to is if this book makes the best seller list, folks are going to be saying Randy Short is a enemy of black people. He's a sellout. Now, Dewan, do you realize that when people put my name out before a few hundred thousand people, people are going to look me up. When a racist looks me up, they don't hear a black white supremacist. They hear a dangerous black nationalist. Huh? A conservative one. I believe in God. America's my country. Then, uh, <laughs> but I'm never saying to someone that, you know, I'd be nonviolent with someone you know, kill your whole family because of Jesus. You don't hear that from me. That's not what I'm talking. And so just get ready. I had a brother, not a brother, but a gentleman tell me, white gentleman, says, you know, you're in a weird place. He says, you come as hard as anyone black I know. You speak on issues that practically anybody would agree with for the most part that has any kind of values. And, and you could go back and forth since so that you're in a unique place. I think, Brother Dewan, you, me, there are a group of us, because when you look at TV and everywhere, they normally don't have black men speaking. I believe in 2022. And from here to here on. Black men are finding their voices. The manosphere, the people that are fighting against feminism and all this other kind of stuff. This stuff is, is permeating. That's it's true. Moving. It's simmering right it's, now. It really is. It's, it's, it's just, it's not been allowed. It's, by the way, Roland Martin has COVID. All of these, the boule and the racists and all these people are trying. It's like a pressure cooker trying to keep us down. The same way, uh, you see, I put something up on Facebook and people censor me over a book cover. I get censored over a joke that people up there with guns talk about committing mass murder and this stuff goes. And say people like you and me stuff pulled off silent. This is really about silencing black men. But you know what? There comes a point where you can't keep things silenced. So I just want to tell you in 2019... All of them, the ACLU, the People for the American Way, uh, Center for American Progress, uh, the Center for uh, a New America, whatever, uh, they all came after me. And when they put it on blast, what I was saying about no to pedophilia, and they put that out before thousands of people, all the people, primarily white, were agreeing. And you know what? They stopped attacking me. Why? Because they're going to. We're going to make a dent. We're going to make this. This dude's going to become a voice. We won't be able to control it. Let's leave him alone. Because we'll make someone that people will agree with. They're working. That's why YouTube messes with how many. If you've reached 2 million people, they're not going to tell you. Okay, this is all a psychological operation it's like the elephant that you had a chain on its leg when it was young and it was so used to something being so strong they couldn't break free. Then you can put a rope when they're an adult when they're at the peak of strength and they won't resist because they've been conditioned that they can't win. Those of us that they haven't broken are going to break out. That This is why they created Black Lives Matter. They've created all this stuff. They're pushing all this trans stuff. They're pushing all of these things to detour, detract, stop obfuscate the real black men and women and they can't stop us okay they, they they can't so i'm saying to you if they bother me in this year if they if they let this thing go out and it does okay if they attack me they'll make me 10 times bigger if they ignore me i'm gonna keep doing it until somebody hears it's the same thing with your radio program, and it's the same thing with everything else. Uh, I, I have people, man, they've taken all your videos off. It's just, I don't know. Compare me to, say, Tariq. Tariq is like a mountain, and I'm like a pet rock. Why are they taking little people's videos away and people who have this huge following? They're not. Or are we bigger than what? They want us to see us. I think it's the latter. I think 
I think you're bigger than what they wanted us to see. I think Tariq's much bigger than they show. I think Brother Jason Black, Might Professor Black Truth. I think that they all have at least at least five times what the numbers show. Because you see the, the cultural impact of what they're doing, and they don't reflect the numbers that they're showing us. And I think people, and, and the same with you, we see the cultural impact that you have, and it does not reflect your social media numbers. They have the power to choose. You see they took away the dislike button. They did that because you have all of these. They have the button there, but you can't see because you have all of these official blue check Hollywood people coming over to this YouTube space. And traditionally, when those approved Negroes come over to YouTube, there are more dislikes on their videos than likes. And they don't want us to see that. So they don't, so, so we're in that type of, uh, of a position to where we can't totally believe what the numbers are. But I'm getting ready to close this out, Dr. Short. I got your book up on the screen right here. Uh, well, and people, you guys can go ahead and find this book on Amazon. Give us your closing thoughts on what on the end of this year and what you see for next year. What I see for next year that's coming is that people are going to wake up and realize that the boule lied to us about Biden, about Kamala, about the shots, about Trump about immigration that we've been the church has lied and i think those few people that do think they're going to be like yeast in a bunch of dough they're going to blow up and put gas and it's going to inflate your bread rises because of the chemical reaction of the yeast inside the the dough and i believe just a handful of us can wake and shake up the whole people they're absolutely and complete mortal fear of black folks who are willing to tell the truth who don't care and we're out here if you don't think reverend barbecue that big fat greasy nigga that has a jerry curl this man's known me 30 years they don't say my name no matter what i say about them because i could i'd slay his big bore ass these people the time comes when the damn you know, this is sort of like a levee. If there's so much pressure from the water coming through, the levee will break. The levee has already broken. This is why all the people like Sharpton and others who have promised some police laws that were going to treat black people better, and Biden basically told them, screw you niggas. Um, the silence from all of these people that told us to vote and support this they, they don't have anything to say because they have nothing to deliver us. And the whole concept of tangibles and we got to get ours, even from the little vicious, piranha fish looking Yvette Carnell, this has had an impact. You know, it's had an impact. And I don't think people are going to go back in to their butterfly cocoon and not see it. So if they open the country back up fully, and they're going to have to, because this country is about making money, then the issues of race and that we want our shit comes back to the fore. And uh, there's nothing that the boule can say. Biden and Kamala have effectively destroyed the influence of the boule over black people. And Fauci's thing with these churches becoming that's a good point that's a good point have destroyed have destroyed the uh, unquestionable position of this the black crutch because it ain't no damn church it's a crutch and so we're coming into an era where people aren't going to trust to believe anything people have seen family and friends die or get sickened from the shot or whatever Certain people now know that you go to the hospital and they try to kill you and take your organs or they may experiment or they'll get paid to kill you for nothing. Some people who would have never believed that from you or me or from Vicki Dillard or, or, or Brother Ron Hurd or anybody or, or all of a sudden people know this is the truth for themselves. And, you know, I love Judge Joe Brown, but I would say for people who've been pushing the shot aren't going to have the same credibility around this shot thing because, right? 
certain people won't be as credible, not because they haven't served or done great things, but because, in a sense, people who are supposedly leaders have told us to just go along, to get along, just do what I say. I don't know what happened. Uh, it looks as if. Oh, here we go. It hung. It hung up on you. You, you backed up the short. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, brother. I didn't do that. That that just the boomer generation is in decline, and my generation, the X generation, is in. It's it's gonna have to break out because the boomers have been holding all of us down, in particular my generation. In fact, the black boomers have done something very, very evil. Instead of dealing with people my age, they've tried to deal with people in their 20s and 30s. And, you know, I deal with this all the time where someone maybe, say, 75 or 80, and they talk to me like I'm five or six. But we'll talk to someone there in their 20s like they're a mature adult. Do you get where I'm coming from? Yeah. There's a whole culture of a generation where basically you can't be anybody because I'm older than you. Those people are dying. Those people have committed suicide by taking the shot. They won't be here. So COVID is a curse and a blessing. The blessing is it's moved a whole lot of people that didn't want to be here. Uh uh, the, the curse is that some good people got caught up that didn't know any better. But it's it's a cleansing, a a genocidal cleansing that's going to happen one way or the other because of our unique situation. So what I'm saying, in 2022 is going to be the first year that some people's eyes will be open for the first time. And when you see what persons like you and I understand, it makes people angry. It will make certain people act. It's going to make people think. Proof of that, I have a cousin, 52. We've had our first conversation over the phone in all these years yesterday. He's upset about COVID and that he thinks it's a fraud. We've never talked about anything serious uh-huh. in five decades. Are you understanding? Yeah, this? yeah, yeah. Certain people's eyes are open, and when your eyes open... You never go back to the lie again. And so a lot of people, the last gust of breath of the boomers, the boule, and this Masonic Luciferian stuff that's over our community, it was all gambled on Biden and Kamala. And we lost every dollar to our name and don't have nothing from the game. So I think that that's what we're going into a new period of enlightenment. Last comment, a hundred, actually 82 years ago, not 82, 98 years ago, black young people rose up against the generations that were there before and started fighting back in 1924. Yes. We are two years away from a century social cultural revolution as a people and everybody that's living today you're in the middle of it in fact what came before the thing in 1924 influenza these yep. young people who had been through all of that world war one and they had influenza and jim crow niggas went nuts 2024 we're in the next two formative years of black folks having a major, major pushback to everything that's been leaning on us. And that's what happened to people in 1924. From 1864, for 60 years, black people had been fucked with. Right? From the so-called end of slavery to then, and then people snapped. Think about it. From 1960 or whatever, from 1964, whatever, it'll be 60 years. It'll be 60 years soon between this so-called civil rights stuff that we're talking about. Really, all this stuff kicked off what, in, in, the, in the 60s when it really, 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 really hit. Okay. 
And so we're going into a same half century in a decade, no matter how you plot the times, where there's going to be this shift. When you think about it, the shift for black people began about 58, 59. If you understand what I'm saying? 59, you have Robert Will, Williams. Uh, you also had the situation where you even had Motown starting 59. A whole bunch of 55, things 55, TRM Howard, that whole, yeah. And all, then. all of this stuff was blowing late 50s. It's about a 60-year cycle. Yeah. That cycle is ending. It's going to end between now and 2024. And new people are going to come out because they have to. The times have become so tough that tough people rise up and take their place. That's all I have to say. So be strong, guys. And I think folks are going to rediscover God. I've never seen so much faithlessness in our people. I didn't see the unk, the consciousness niggas took the shots fast than the church people did. Yes, they did. Orthodox Muslims were so strong, took the shot. Where's the faith of our people that said, no, not another Tuskegee? I think some people who didn't do it, there's going to be a faith our ancestors used to have. Uh, that faith uh, comes from the most high. People need to reconnect. Once you realize your government's against you, everybody's against you, but the most high God and those people that are godly around you. Some people beginning to get to that maroon consciousness that maybe it'll just be a few of us, but our ass is going to be free, right? I believe that that's, that's becoming a point of understanding and more and more people. It doesn't take everybody. I need to remind people, Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee never had more than 600 people. The Black Panthers, heavily infiltrated, never had more than 5,000. The uh, Southern Christian Leadership Conference never had more than 10,000 members. You get where I'm coming from? The Brotherhood yeah. of Sleeping Fall Porters never had more than 3,000 people. The Republic of New Africa never had but a few thousand. I can go on and on and on and on. Only a few of us are necessary to bring major change in our community. Uh, so uh, I hope people in 2022 realize God's real. The Bible is actually our book. It's about hard-headed black people not listening to God. It has nothing to do with white people, um, except for the ones that killed Jesus and were persecuting the people of God when they were disobedient. Um, I'm serious. Anyway, um, and this is my comment to all the conscious coons out there. We did better with the white punk-ass Jesus and what we're doing with everything we've replaced it with. And I don't think Jesus was a white punk. Maybe your grandparents did, your grandmammy and grandpappy did. But <laughs> what was good that that dude was talking about, we need to reintegrate into our community, in particular love, neighbor, as self. If we could just get that piece, if we could just get that, we'd get far. Let me let you go, my brother. Thank you, Dr. Shore, for that, man. Dr. Randy yes, Shore, thank you, for, thank you for calling us in. I'll call you back later on. All right. All right. That was Dr. Randy Short. Yeah, giving us his closing wisdom. Yeah, I, I think we got. I think we on the right path, people. And you know, even when it comes down to the Christianity thing, a lot of us left the church, including me. Um, but I say, even leaving the church, there are things within the church that work. There are things within the spiritual systems that work. Take from it the parts that work, the parts that you apply to your life, that add and they produce and they show and prove, and they help you advance. Leave the rest of that shit behind. I know me personally, you know, when Dr. Short said, love yourself and love your neighbor. Look, let me tell you something. Self-love means loving yourself to the point to where you're you're, you love yourself so much, you're willing to go to whatever lengths you need to go to to defend your peace. That's what's true self-love. Loving neighbor is loving those who look like you, the people who are on being attacked like you. Give them more love than you give what them other folks say about them people right there next to you. It's not saying that you're going to get along with every black person. It's not saying that you need to invite every black person into your home. It's a lot of worthless niggas out there. We all know this. But with that being said, it's a lot of people who aren't worthless. It's a lot of black folks who are on code. Love them. 
and love yourself and love yourself enough to defend your peace. Love yourself enough to not allow outsiders to steal your joy and your peace. Defend it. That's what love yourself means. That's what love your neighbor means. These are things that we can take and apply to our lives. The rest of that shit, we can leave outside in the outhouse. But uh, yeah, thank y'all. and I, uh, Thank y'all for asking y'all questions. Uh, I'm going to get back to you. I saw Lori Brown. I saw you write a question earlier about the debt ceiling. Um, we're going to talk about that on, uh, on a future show. I, little, little, the little I can say about that is don't worry about the debt ceiling. This country's broke. It's been broke for over 100 years. And they play their little, their little political games to get us worried, thinking about debt ceiling this. We've already inherited more debt than our generation is ever going to be allowed, ever going to pay back. Um, my, my thoughts on that is just this. Hey, you know, we're heading into a new world. New financial systems are coming. New governments are coming. New nations are coming. There's a lot of beautiful things that are becoming over the next 20 to 30 years that were not in existence the last 30 to 60 years. So to that, I just say be ready. Um, be the best person you can be. Be as strong as you can be. And through being the best you can be, through being the strongest you'll be, you can be, you'll find other people on that same vibration link, uh, vibration wavelength, and love them as much, love them as your neighbor. All right. Thank y'all for listening. I know we've been on for a long time. Get your t-shirts at hotepish.com slash shop. Live drum sample packs will be coming out for you in January. We're bringing that live drum sound right back to the music. So thank y'all for listening. And remember this. There are no perfect messengers. Only perfect messages for those who are willing to pick up the game. My name is Dwan B. I'm out. Thank you.